and welcome to Haphazard Heroes, where six friends take part in a cooperative storytelling adventure set in the realm of Kaldaren using Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Last week, uh, several of the heroes got lessons in crewing a sailing ship, while others investigated the large crates that were in the hold. Um, Nerd and Kaz specifically made some cases for Felix not to rock the proverbial boat, as it were, and to let them be for the time being, um, only to be interrupted um, mid-pitch by a uh, very rude whale. Um, I can't believe I said that correctly the first try. Um, that rammed the ship several times before diving uh, da uh, down into the depths, but not before Lilith was uh, able to shout at it uh, and heard it rumble a single word, run, um, to the party as uh, the storm began to build towards the, the, the ship's path. In the throes of the stormy seas, the ship, the White Rabbit's foot, uh, its passengers and crew encountered this massive beast with tentacles that tried to pull the ship under the water and succeeded in throwing several crew into the water, uh, smashing the party's poor cleric, a cleric in a single crushing blow, leading to a uh, suddenly a frantic fight in the rain with the healer unconscious and being fought around dangerously as Felix and Nerd brought two barrels of uh, smuggled black powder uh, onto the deck. Felix used the ship's uh, tar buckets to make some improvised sticky bombs that Nerd dead-eyed and ignited at a reasonably safe distance. Um, Lilith also uh, met the business end of one of these awful spiked eyeballed tendrils in the fight. Um, but as the fight seemed hopeless, the beast must have considered this meal just a little bit more trouble than it was worth and slowly released the ship and slipped back under the waves with uh, two very damaged tentacles. Uh, Captain Kristoff uh, administered one of two really dusty looking Genesis health potions from his belt and brought Big T back from the brink uh, mid-fight. And uh, Tarakis was able to sort of triage the remaining party members, but I believe we left off um, right at that point. Um, and correct me if, I, if, I miss, if I'm uh, missing anything there towards the end of that fight, because it happened pretty quick because we were running out of time. But I believe we should pick up there. Uh, it is still raining and storming. The ship's still rocking in the seas. Um, uh, it's crazy to you that this storm and rocking of the boat is suddenly calm compared to what the scene was just moments before. Um, the scene, though, is pretty dire. Everyone is soaked. Tarakas and Lilith both, uh, even though they may have just been healed, have been healed to a bit, don't look very good at all. Um, uh, but everyone is, though maybe injured, alive. Um, and there's this kind of quiet on the ship as the storm just kind of rages on for a second, and all the people who have survived on the on the on the crew on the um, top deck, mainly the captain, I think one other sailor um, is working to maybe pull up somebody. Uh, you can see on the side of the boat, but it is this sudden quiet on the ship. As those of you who are uh, conscious and up are on the ship's top deck in the middle of the storm, we can pick up there. Looking around. Oh, it was crazy. Who else was healing? Anybody? Anybody hurt? I mean, I still don't feel the greatest. There are wounds. <laughs> okay, so there's some quick flashes of blue light. Uh, I believe is how. He, is it from the amulet? Is it from your hand? Or how does this work, Tarakas? It's it's from the amulet. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll that out. Um, Rick, uh, quickly, it sounds like uh, Felix is looking around, kind of checking the surroundings. Yeah, specifically for anything uh, like a life person like me could be useful for. Sure, sure, sure. Um, you uh, first um, go ahead and call it your, your healing. They're, they're big team. Uh, uh, you got three hit points back. <laughs> I rolled a I one. Was hoping there was a, I was hoping there was a plus <laughs> to that. Yeah, no, I rolled a one. Don't spend it all in one yeah, place. Yeah, hey, all HP is good HP. Um, yeah. Um, you know, uh, you kind of look around and you see 
Um, this is a good chance to kind of do two birds with one stone here. You see that the one sailor and the captain are kind of both working to pull, kind of like pull somebody up over the side of the, uh, it looks like they're trying to pull something up over the side of the ship. Um, you kind of look around and it's, uh, you see Tarakas trying to heal people. Um, there's no one else on the deck of the ship any longer other than uh, the people who were flung over, um, other than you guys and the captain. Um, it's quiet at the moment. Uh, how's everyone else in the party looking health-wise? Like they kind of answer both Felix and Tarakas's question. Okay. Okay. It was a couple pretty big think... hits. Yeah, I don't know that it got too spread around. So everyone else. I didn't take any damage. Everyone else looks wet, but okay. Um, if the captain's helping people up, pull people up over the side, at least that one person, he'd go over and try to help, especially sure. if they were struggling. Sure. Um. Uh, with the three of you, it's pretty easy, um, with no checks even needed, it's pretty easy to pull over, uh, pull up and over. There's, um, uh, a single, um, a single sailor. This is, uh, Neville, the kind of nasally guy who is kind of being pulled up out of the water and is immediately kind of screaming pretty loudly, breaking the silence. It looks like, um, the entire right leg from, uh, just kind of just under the hip is completely missing and he is bleeding out of a stump. Um, uh, but the rest of him seems to be uh, intact, but he's doing the high-pitched wail of somebody who is about to pass out from shock, which is exactly what happens as you get him op up and over the rail. <laughs> can, can Felix run over and apply some basic first aid? Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, Give me a medicine check. Anybody else want to do something with this uh, scene? Else um, I'm going to uh, call out for Tarakis yeah. for help. Yeah, I was, I'll run over. Oh, he medic. looks messed up. <laughs> okay. 22. 22. So um, you know right away that the very first thing that needed to happen is a tourniquet. So um, you don't have, uh, um, those of you see uh, um, Felix pretty quickly uh, whip off, um, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty ancient, like almost. My cravat. It's cravat, yeah. Um, his uh, green cravat, cravat and um, cinches it up, um, kind of wraps it up. Um, it's completely soaked in the rain. Um, those of you that have seen any Jackie Chan movie knows that uh, this has now become the most durable substance in the world as he wraps it up. Um, the silk cravat like tightens on as this, uh, um, this uh, at once floofy cravat becomes an extremely tight tourniquet, um, cutting off the blood flow and noticeably stopping. It's still a awful looking stump bloody stump but for now it's not spraying as much as it was before Tarakas, this is what you see as you come upon this uh this situation was he still unconscious he just passed out yep either from shock or from hp you don't know but he is out cold we need to get him below deck out of the cold uh, yeah hold on and i'm just gonna touch him really quick and cast spare the dying on him yeah he, um, yes. yeah, he, this, uh, um, Felix has kind of cinched it off and it's kind of like said, like, we got to get him downstairs right as he starts to do this, this, um, this sailor starts to like seize and kind of like flop on the, on the deck, uh, in a pretty scary way that the remaining people on the boat kind of like, Oh, it's quiet again. Tarakas kind of like reaches out, um, with this, uh, this, um, amulet and again it kind of glows this color um those of you near near him easily with the passive perception kind of see when this thing glows there it looks like um those of you that ever did you know like book it or scholastic logos it's this like image of an open book um it's this like very simple logo sort of icon uh that is on this 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 <laughs> amulet that you don't really see until it like does something but he kind of does a few things in rapid succession and it's just kind of like subtle glow um but he reaches out and this Sailors kind of like calms for a moment, um, and rather than being this kind of like really rigid unconscious, he sort of goes limp in the captain's arms. Calm. Good work. I can get him down below. Yeah, let's go. It's wet up here. Yeah. So I'll scoop him up okay. gently as I can, and you got you him. Know. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna. So the captain goes back to the helm and says, um, um, he goes. Uh, he looks around over the over the over the edges for a quick second. Takes his last remaining dusty health potion, kind of puts it in your big paw. Has uh, looks to you and says, "If he needs it, give him this. It's the last one. Make it count." And he uh, uh, kind of does the uh, 
uh, action hero kind of like clap on the shoulder um, and uh, hops back up to the uh, soaking mast and kind of takes this short length of rope and kind of ties himself to the the wheel um, to like start to steer it in the middle of the storm um, as the rest of you in this kind of are able to it, this is the one who was really nasally and scrawny this person's um, oh, 20 pounds lighter even than Felix but he's just like wiry you can easily carry him down yeah. um as I'm carrying him down, like I'm gonna be looking around for like the rest of our party to make sure that yep. we're all okay. Like, so I'm definitely gonna be like calling out for Lilith. I'm be looking for Nerd and yeah. like get down below, everybody. Just get underneath, underneath in the hold now. To kind of paint it a little bit more too. This is it's so loud, even though like you know the rain pouring, like the waves kind of crashing. You know, you guys can hear Kaz's uh, his uh, kind of booming voice. Um, carrying over the waves and the din of this storm almost because it's so deep like a, this kind of rumbling ca voice and um commanding tone you don't hear a lot from him um what's everyone else doing um lilith is gonna look around is there anybody else on deck that needs help like is there anybody struggling to get down below there's not everyone else, all the other sailors that were on deck were um, flung overboard. This seems to be the only survivor that, that was visible or able to make it back to the boat. You guys are the only ones that are... Well, let me make sure that roll 20 is accurate as I'm saying that. Yeah, because that captain took that sailor. Imagine I'm struggling. That captain in the sa uh, went back to the... Um, oops, that's the wrong roll 20. Oop, oop. I'll make this a little bit easier for you since it's on the screen. That sailor is the one that went and helped Kaz take it down, down below, so I'm going to move him to the GM layer. And the captain is up at the wheel. So um, with Kaz kind of going down, because remember here, I'm going to move people so you can see the steps down below are right here. Hopefully that's not too delayed for you. So um, you guys can, that is really the, the scene. Um, yeah, what's everyone, what everyone would like to do? You've heard Kaz kind of like carry this wounded sailor down, bark an order. Uh, is there, is there like any kind of uh, canvas tarp covering any of the the uh, boxes in the holding bay? Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, there are, and there's. Remember, there's a several floors. Uh, you could take him to right. the. So here are your options quickly. There is the uh, f the first deck below that you're. You know, we'll call it the second deck just to make it simple. Um, is sort of the crew quarters. There's like hammocks everywhere. There's the mess, the galley, the Tarakas. It smells. You guys can see that there's kind of like a. Um, it's not sticky, but there's like little chunks of potato and vegetables um, all over the floor um, on this uh, 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 on this floor. Um, the uh, floor beneath that. So the third deck is the beginning of the kind of the hold where you uh, they have storage crates, uh, miscellaneous smaller things like that. The hold um, farthest down, uh, the very uh, fourth deck all the way down is where you guys were staying, where the massive biggest crates were. Uh, the mess hall area was the... I don't suppose there'd be any kind of oven going. Um, Tarakas had one going right before he left. It just got spilled, right? I mean, right? You were making a, a stew or a soup of some kind? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that would be, that would be down below. It's everywhere. One of my best soups ever, possibly. But now it's ruined. It's everywhere. Looking let's, forward to it. Let's move them over here. It is it's warm. Yeah, Cass, I need to Cass, find... yeah. Cass will follow. Yeah. He's he's liable to go into shock again if we don't keep him warm. So what are we supposed to do? Uh oh, I might have a spell for that. I'm going to go get one of those tarps. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. There's plenty of them. There's small like any kind of size. There's like all kinds of things on this kind of um, on this floor here, there's uh, burlap bags, tarps, small items. It's mostly smaller things here because the bigger stuff's down below. I'm, uh, yeah, I'll just grab one of the tarps and run it over to him. Okay. Tarakas uh, might have a spell for that. Grab my amulet and like put my hand over the tarp and everything. And oh, hold on, and I'll just press to digitate it so it's uh, warm, so it warms it up. Okay. Ooh. There That's we go. Trick. Yeah. I'm discovering more about my powers. That is handy. 
do you two have this under control? Uh, well, I, guess. I think so, yes. Stay with him then. I'm going to go back up top and see if they need anybody more help. Okay. All right. He will run go. I'm going to check on okay, them now. Bye. Yeah, this this quick moment that everyone has kind of gone downstairs to do some immediate triage and find a space uh, kind of leaves a uh, a moment with uh, uh, Nerd and Lilith still sort of um, um, with the moment to do what they would like. So you see the captain sort of lashed himself to this wheel. Um, Nerd and Lilith, uh, you watch as everyone else kind of takes him down to a, a flight. You see that there are at the moment ropes kind of like flapping everywhere. Um, the captain sort of just trying his best to maintain what he can and as a kind of shout out he's like I know it's maybe off off the clock but will help it be appreciated oh yeah no I was totally already in the process of helping I just like yeah. say anything um so I, I would think... have rolled to repair my gun which I did um that would have been my first six seconds but after that I would have been like stupid motherfucker why didn't you avoid the goddamn storm you dumbass what the, blah, 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 blah. like yeah. and then like as while I'm cussing him out, I will yeah, be doing the tying rope. ropes off or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, you probably don't need much help, Lilith. What are your uh, What are your plans? You see, kind of a nerd has been put to work. And... She's she's standing there and she wants to help, but she doesn't know what to do. So, yeah. nerd, is there anything I can do to help? I don't know much about boats. Um, honestly, at this point, it's just kind of like shit crazy. So it's probably better for you just like if you can stay on the deck. Sure, just stay here and like cheer us on. Otherwise, go downstairs. Okay, go nerd. You're doing <laughs> great. Yay, captain. The captain. The scene sort of ends perfectly with nerd and the captain sort of is like silently sharing a look of like. <laughs> and I imagine that... you with like two bushels of seaweed just. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, um, you know, uh, the scene sort of shifts back, um, Star Wars style, to uh, this kind of like campy scene, to this horrible triage uh, 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 in the galley of um, uh, this bloody mess. Um, what are you guys down below working on this person, um, this sailor, uh, want to do? Um, it doesn't have to be that, too. Like, what do you guys want to do with your scene now? Can't you? Can't you do anything, you know, with your, you know, lean in real close with, with your magic and, you know, your god lady? Oh, I can, but most of the stuff I've got prepared would kill him right now. I can, I can just heal him, but I can't do anything to throw his leg back. I mean, healing sounds pretty good right now. Do that. Yeah. Okay. I do that. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> <laughs> we have now checked every D and D trope. Okay, I do that. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll, pump I'll a little cure wounds one more yeah. time. Uh, I am, but uh, I'll use cure wounds one more time. And uh, yeah, oops. whoa, what did I do there. D, go ahead and roll it and give me the total uh, HP add. The narrow, uh, the flavor though is another. This sort of the similar glow with the amulet. This stump. Yeah. Ooh, eight, eight HP back there. Nice. So this is a, a bloody stump sort of um, heals over and kind of bubbles almost like, uh, and it, it looks disgusting for just a quick second. It's like bubbles and pusses for a moment and then heals over into this sort of like scarred tissue. Um, it looks uh, um, uh, not, not the best, but it's effective and no longer as gory as it was uh, a second ago. For the, for the moment, um, you know, he's still out cold, though. How horrifyingly curious. Yeah, I, I can save their lives and stuff like that, but I can't do anything for the pain. Maybe you can keep them out. Oh, uh, well, as it so happens, yes. Um, can I use my alchemy kit to just come up with a simple sedative? Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, something to kind of like soothe the pain. Yeah, um, compared to the, a lot of the things that you make, uh, uh, this is probably a very simple and easy one to make. Of uh, um, uh, tell me what it looks like. Is this just like a quick like? Is this leaves or is this a fizzing uh, tablet? Or just, like uh, this would definitely be. I think uh, I 
really quick just pull out like a small little wooden uh uh mortar and pestle like i have and uh kind of spit in it a little bit to get like a a base going and yeah put some dried leaves in there maybe a a little tobacco for the the nicotine like the alertness effect and uh probably have some some Hmm. leaves with a more i hate it opiate kind of background um and then yeah just kind of work him into a bit of a salve and then i'll just kind of lift his upper lip and just kind of stick it in there like gross chew (laughs) this is the most i hate it i wish i hadn't have asked but that's perfect so the uh this uh, unconscious person now has this kind of bulgy upper lip but uh functional but um uh maybe unsightly stump at the moment um but it's nothing that a nice rag and a uh maybe a, a length of wood um can't fix it's not the first he's time going, that a sailor's seen it he's going to probably be awake soon uh but uh he's going to be pretty out of it nice job kaz you're probably at this moment able to kind of run up and you're you're seeing a uh, a scene of nerd uh doing what looks to be sort of like two jobs at once uh running back and forth um bitching pretty loudly the entire time the captain is sort of just taking it in stride um not saying much uh lilith is um thinking of like rhyming couplets with people's names and really just uh telling people how great of a job they're doing soaked hair stuck to her stuck to her head um, I'm going to walk up as close as I can to the captain and just be like, do you need any help? Do you need me to do anything? Awesome. You see big shit flying around? Grab it. Hold it down. Pretty much. That's fair. Yeah. You remember that there was a couple stations that you were trained on by Mackenzie uh, earlier that uh, looked like you could tie them down pretty easily. Some ropes that are out of place that um, if not op- being optimal, you could at least tie them down. To, um, so yeah. you take a couple moments to do that. Yeah, basically whatever like nerd or the captain dictate or tell him to do, since they're the sailors, he would just do it because it's their expertise. So whatever they would tell him to do, that's what you know, okay. within reason. He's not going to jump into the water, but like, All right. you know, there's a this, this is <laughs> this, dumb. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, this is um, I already threw a crack at you guys. Uh, you guys are okay. It's it's I'm not going to do that type of. Uh, so you guys um see this? Yeah, it's true. You guys see that. Uh, this montage kind of passes as there's people helping uh, injured crew members below, um, getting essentially navigating out of the storm um, uh, and into calmer waters. Um, after about an hour of this, the regular crew is able to kind of take over their own, like the rest of their stations, um, that are, those that are still alive and still able to take over their stations, relieve the captain, so the captain's able to sort of mingle and not have to be lashed to the to the wheel any longer um uh the injured crewman uh neville is still out um but uh is attended to by some of the other crew members mackenzie that you that you recognize um they're all kind of like drinking for the some of them you haven't seen any of them do uh the entire trip but um a few of them have broken out some small drinks and then are toasting to Linus, the uh, crew member with the uh, red shirt and the bandana that was flung off the uh, off of the uh, ship, um, it was not found again. Um, but uh, red shirt, huh? Yeah. Uh, the um, the the captain is also oddly enough not scolding one for the drinks, but actually takes one, kind of raises it himself, and um, uh, just one, and then uh, kind of swallows it, and kind of looks around to those of you that are um well first of all don't let me narrate you guys down there uh, those of you that were on the decks uh, can can be relieved um and not have to do uh, any uh work for free um and are welcome to kind of join anybody that you'd like um there seems to be sort of a gathering here in the galley um Tarakis, uh once you've healed the sky is there anything you want to do during this kind of uh, period of time you are in the galley uh, uh again there is still um, soup here. I guess there is still ingredients. You would have to start over, but, you know, no soup will ever be as good as the first one, but spirits are down in the ship. 
if everybody's meeting up on the deck though, just to honor the fallen sailor, I'll they'll head up there, and uh, they're they're they are down in the galley. Way. They're just outside the galley. Oh, okay. yeah. You can actually see from the galley that because this they've they've kind of brought him down to where it was warm, and they're all gathered around the injured crewmen, kind of toasting the injured. So you can you can see it right from this sort oh, of okay. like window in the galley on the second uh, on the second deck. Um, you can see that everyone is drenched, wet, and the, the spirits are low. Yeah, then uh, he'll probably just start um, messing around in the kitchen a little bit, try getting the soup going again with whatever is left. Okay. Let's get back to is Felix still in there. Uh, yeah, uh, Felix would probably be using this opportunity to uh, take close study of the effects of wound closure when magic is applied. Slash, uh, it's not every day he gets to see someone nearly die from blood loss so he's taking medical uh notes essentially of yeah how it, to recognize the stuff it looks like something he, like rapid cell regeneration like rapid healing it doesn't seem to be like there's scarring just like there would be on a on a regular um amputee this looks to be just like it was accelerated regeneration almost um uh the glow seems to seem to come from his hand the amulet, or sorry, the amulet, um, sort of like from him through the amulet and onto the wound, but the wound itself never glowed or did any goopy weird stuff. It just sort of like, kind of like sealed Se over. Seemingly innocuous question, just so I can get an mm -hmm. idea for like what uh, scientific period mm -hmm. I'm working in. Do I know cells? Um, There are plenty of lenses. They're probably extremely expensive. Um, you probably know about like small, like little microorganisms. You probably don't know a lot about like, you know, nuclei and stuff like that. Maybe at least not the common person for sure. Um, right. but, uh, you know, there are lenses. If they could get really expensive, it's not that hard to line a couple of them up and get a microscope. That's been around for a while. Cool. Um, that being said, lighting it and getting it that strong and that fine tune is just another thing. But, um, yeah. I think at least like, you know, I'm, I don't know that exactly. I'll look that up. All right. Thought yeah. I'd ask. We'll say yes. Cool. The mitochondria. So for people that can't afford <laughs> magic healing. Yeah. For people that can't afford magic healing, are they do they still use leeches? No, there's this is not a world okay. where there is leeches. This is a fairly educated okay. world. Um the world that you guys know of is uh so for put this in context. Um Kaz's tribe probably had a absolutely had a healer. Um, they don't have reasons to do a lot of like you know manual medicine, but it's a kind of a co the combination of like shamanic kind of traditions and you know magical healing. Nerd ships ship captains probably all, always had a um, some sort of doctor or vet in some uh -huh. cases. Uh, if you can't afford that, you know you make do with what you can on the open seas. Um, even like major cities had you know Genesis Health that is essentially just sort of like commoditized magical healing there are healers that are like manual you know like what's the what's medical. the word medicinal healers like yeah um they are looked at as medicine yeah they are looked at as being the alternative alternative med medicines because they are grimier they're slower maybe if they are more trusted you know more affordable not as easy maybe more affordable but that is a twist in a world of readily available okay. magic. I Go imagine back. when I'm like, sorry. No, go ahead. I, I imagine when I was making the soup, though, like getting everything back to what I had before. Uh, if Felix is still there, I'll probably just be talking to him, even if he's not listening, just muttering to myself. Captain Cold had a Kraken? That's crazy. Oh, I've never seen anything like that. Do you think we'll run into another one? I hope not. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I didn't see a single crack on it. There's... No, good point. I'll have to ask about that later. The crew kind of like, there's a collective sort of groan, almost like a laugh track in a sitcom as the crew kind of like uh, doesn't laugh at the, the mention of the Kraken. The, uh, the, the captain sort of like eyeballs the, all of you guys and says, uh, um, Kraken's most people don't live to tell about it. The I'm not gonna lie. He kind of um, reaches behind him and kind of pulls out. There's like a small pouch um, 
tosses it to Nerd. Nerd, this small pouch is uh, um, with a quick way. Seems to be about 50 gold in this pouch. And the captain says, um, kind of looks at uh, Kaz and says, I knew you were good luck. And I, uh, right when I saw you, I'm glad we picked you all up. Most people, they don't live through encounters like that. Um, and uh, my father lost the ship or uh, the shipment. That'd have been it for me. I would have lost my job. I lost my livelihood. You, you all saved the ship. You saved most of the crew. And uh, can't thank you enough. How many crew are? Well, can I figure out how many crew are gone? A and is Prescott one of the ones that's gone? No, Prescott is there and uh, partaking in the drinking. Um, Linus um, was uh, um, one of the uh, ones that was tossed, and um, Paunch, the kind of other uh, uh, shirtless um, beer belly guy, was also launched. Okay, Paunch got launched. Well. Well, Captain, I'm I'm really happy that 25 gold is your going price for a life. Makes sense. Um, anyway, um, I'll walk over to Prescott and I'll just I'll take 10 of the gold and then I'll say, hey, this isn't enough for those barrels, but it's a way to do. And I'll give him 40. Yeah. Uh, Captain's sort of confused at what just happened, but the 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 insult slight sort of uh, is enough to sort of distract him from the fact of like why you're also paying Presley something. Um, uh, but he sort of, uh, you know, I'm, uh, wish I could also give you the longboat, but, uh, given the ship's condition, I think we might, we might need it. And I don't know if I can give that to you, but, uh, well, we'll be well paid when we get to, get to port. And I suppose that, uh, I know it's not in our, Paths don't cross, but if we ever see you again, I'll be happy to reimburse reimburse you more. But uh, for now, um, the pockets are fairly light. I can really just give you your own board back. Sounds good. When we see you again, you give us gold, or you're dead. <laughs> kind of like raises uh, raises it again. Doesn't take another shot, but kind of sets it down and uh, um, looks extremely tired uh, for the moment, and kind of a. Uh, loosens his jacket and kind of goes to walk back towards one of the berths to to lay down. Tarakis, your uh, soup starts to bubble and uh, the um, crew that's sort of all now started to just sit sullen and wet and quietly on a second deck. Um, they can start to smell it and you hear a few people kind of like starting to look in. Yeah, it's not ready yet, okay? It's got to simmer for five minutes after that. Then you you, you got to let it warm. I just want it's one. Off, I mean. Just give me a little taste. Give me one. Just one. No, no. It's going to ruin it. it. You'll burn your mouth. You won't even be able to taste the rest of the soup. You, no, just hold on. You've waited this long. Uh, warm up first. Kind of like. But it smells so good. <laughs> yeah, that... It's just because this place stinks. <laughs> so... Um, uh, eventually the, uh, Tarakis managed to fight off the nosiest, uh, people, the hungriest people until the soup is really ready. Um, but eventually it is- I will slap knuckles with a wooden spoon if I have to. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the first ma the first guy probably needed it, uh, before he desist, de uh, cease and desist, but, uh, um, yeah, you you don't need it on everybody, but you have it ready. You have it ready if you need it. It's a ready to action. <laughs> um, yeah. So eventually, the afternoon um, goes by. Um, waters get a little bit calmer. Tarakas is able to you know distribute this uh, soup to the crew. There's um, some conversation uh, starts back up. Um, the uh, uh, mood is not high spirits, but at least people seem to be doing a little better with some warm food. The topic seems to be talking about how bad the food was before this.
Anything else you guys like to do on the ship um, at the moment? I will pass out two gold to each party member. Okay. What's this for? Nerd? Where'd oh. this come from? Ah, it was from the captain. It's just for, you know, saving the ship, because apparently that was enough. Oh. Oh, that's nice of him. <laughs> I see what just happened. So the uh, uh, nerd kind of hands out some 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 gold. You guys, uh, um, uh, you guys are able to kind of pack it away. Um, everyone kind of has the evening to do whatever they'd like. It is um, probably mid afternoon. You guys are able to do whatever you'd like for the rest of the uh, evening. You have several hours. Um, it doesn't have to be play by play. You guys can kind of narrate to me um what you'd like to do or the next couple hours before you actually go down for a, a rest of any kind felix would like to wait until the captain is kind of on his own and then find him okay all right anybody else we'll do that as a scene anybody else the rock is um, head down to the holding area okay and just try to get some shut eye i guess even if it if it's a 10 hour, 12 hour rest. Sure. Going to bed early just because it was a long day. Did he just be tired? Yeah. He just doesn't like the water anymore. Oh, yeah, too. How about you, Lilith? Um, She's going to take an hour at some point during the day and try and take a short rest and get rid of this hangover. Yeah, give me another roll. You can do that right away, too. Uh, especially after you get some warm soup. Man, those hammocks will just look. If you've ever like actually been in a hammock and it's nice like rocking, it's warm and you get... what's your plus? I don't know. It might be close. God damn it. Uh let's see. Hold on. Cause it was what was I drinking? I was drinking ale, so eight plus two plus one. I met it. Meeting it, it I had to beat an eleven. No, uh, no, meeting it passes. Uh, you can meet it with an eleven. I, I would okay. want it to work like they got a DC. So no more hangover. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just barely, no though. Yeah, at the end, very end of that long rest, you just barely start to feel a little bit better. Um, yeah. Um, Kaz or Nerd, anything you want to do before a long rest would happen? Not in particular. I'll just... Not just yet? Dick around. Cup? He's not really sure what to do with the gold. Yeah. Kind of just holds it. Because you're not wearing all your stuff, though, either. You're like, you're all cat I mean, he's, cats out of the bag, Yeah, I mean, right? he's got, like, he's got like pants on, like, you know, whatever. But he's not, like, wearing the boots or yeah. um, his cloak. He put that all in his pack neatly sure. that's in the hold where they're yeah. staying. Um, so is he just pawing this gold? He's got a pretty big paw. He could probably just, like, palm it for a bit. Yeah, he's just, like, not really sure if he wants to keep it or not. Okay. Um... I think he'll, is there, are there any other sailors around? Yeah, there's a few. I mean, they're all kind of milling about. There's others than the ones I've named, but they're all kind of unnamed sort of crew members, but they're around. He'll just, he'll give it to whoever he thinks needs it the most. Mackenzie's probably the one you have the most rapport with. Um, that older he'll probably, grizzled guy. He'll give it to Mackenzie. Yeah. Hey, you just, what, are you going to just give me two gold? Well, I have no need for it. It doesn't belong to me. You I'd, take it. Two gold. You've earned it more than me. Take it. And he'll press it into his hand. He kind of looks at it and he's like, all right, I don't. He kind of looks around and he's like, I can't. My, my mama raised me to. He kind of like pats himself down and he kind of brings out. There's this um, kind of old leather pouch and he kind of like brings it out and flips it open. And inside there's this like, it's just sort of like tin beat up, but it's this um, kind of a flimsy piece of metal that kind of like moves like this. And it looks like a little telescope on it. Um, and he kind of like hands it to you and says, uh, um, man, I don't, I've got a, a lot nicer one, but uh, I've had this one for a long time. And oops, that's the captain's voice. My bad. Um, he's like, I've had, uh, I've had this one for a long time and, uh, you know, um, don't really need it. And uh, two gold is, well, that's a lot. And uh, I want you guys, I want you to have it. Um, and he hands this over, and for your inventory, you can put in there a, a sextant, is what this is. Uh, as, um, 
but he um you've All seen right. him use it. you've seen him use it uh those are the rest of you that are kind of around you kind of um uh anybody who's interested at some point um and this can happen later too we'll we'll this won't be a scene scene but you know um uh Actually, we might cover that later when if he if he has it out, um, if Felix ever sees it. But the rest of you guys, you know, anybody that's good with maps or knows anything about it, um, yeah, you guys know that this is some something something used to take angles of uh, celestial objects to sort of measure distances and uh, uh, chart your position using celestial objects. Sweet. The. Um, um yeah. can i clasp his i'm gonna clasp his arm and just like not the hand but I'll clasp his arm and just say thank you my friend this is this is a generous gift i will treasure this thank you uh absolutely yeah uh, i'm with the captain i think um even though you guys did a lot of the work i think something about y'all seems like good luck just having y'all around seemed to i don't think we would have survived otherwise so thank y'all mm. Still holding his arm, I'll just look him in the eye and I'll say, My name is Kazan El Zaid, and I am the last son of the Katarian Pride. And if you ever need anything, you may call on me. Name's Mackenzie McBride. And uh it's good to meet you. Uh if I ever make it that far into <laughs> inland, I'll be sure to look you up. But uh I can be found. Cause I'm easy to point out in a crowd. That's true. He kind of chuckles at that, and uh, um, and uh, yeah, kind of like gives it the the firm predator handshake. Um, <laughs> Sweet. The uh, was there anybody else? Am I missing any tracking other things before we go back to the captain and Felix? So, um, Felix, yeah, the captain is you know had about a, a few minutes. He's kind of like taking his boots off, and he's got him, got him up. Um, kind of jackets undone um he's just sort of like he's not sleeping but he's just sort of like resting like that dozing of just like <sighs> he's kind of alone in the corner of a felix room. will just kind of uh ooze up to lean beside him yeah mm -hmm. yeah i know what you mean yeah he kind of say uh can't thank you enough for, God, I can't get these voices straight. Um, can't thank you enough for uh, for helping us back there. Um, wasn't Actually, I think you can. Anything. What can, what can I do for you? I'm curious, who, who are you uh, taking this shipment to? In Deepcrest? Yes. Well, said it was going to deep crest. Do you know the buyers of your cargo? Let me check. He kind of like um, looks over at his berth, and there's a um, not a lot of paperwork, but there's sort of like a clipboard type thing. Um, picks it up and kind of looks at it, and he's like, you know, the contract itself is with uh, Tempest Shipping, but all the contracts through through Tempest. Um, they usually sub some contract out uh, to individual people put an order together and pay someone like me to take it from point A to point B. How much are they paying you for uh, your cargo? On arrival? Chase. Uh, well, I'm not getting paid for the, the cargo ain't mine. It's uh, just a completing the contract of a transpo, but uh, my, my take myself is... Uh, Around 250 gold. I gotta share that with a lot of people, though. Is that contract for uh, getting all of the boxes there, or just simply some of them? Yeah. Uh, Tempest is uh, pretty particular. I gotta get all of it. It's gotta be in uh, tip-top shape. That's why I'm concerned that uh, that attack was gonna damage the ship to the point that it was gonna lose some of those boxes it would ruin me but thankfully he all saved the ship indeed i heard you uh call us your good luck charm yeah that big cat it's good luck big white cat 
Certainly would seem so. Uh, perhaps, if he is good luck, I can be your fortune teller. You are carrying a certain amount of cargo that holds very destructive properties. Oh, I would. Shit! He kind of stands up. He's like, "We got explosives on board." In a manner of speaking. You are carrying the potential death of hundreds, if not thousands, of people in your ship hold. What do you mean? What could do that? What could do something like that? There's a substance you're carrying. Very addictive. Very violent. Uh, the crates marked with a black pyramid or triangle herald a destructive nature that seems benign at first. He kind of sits down in the, the hammock again pretty hard and... My friend, I can't can't just push these overboard it would it would ruin me I, I... would would it mean anything to you if whenever they dropped off I could do my best to try and tell you who the subcontractor is and where maybe they're going that could be quite helpful although I expect that I will not be able to stop the dissemination of this shipment. But you I will take any information I can get. You won't have good news for you and have bad news for you? I, uh, I'll be able to send a sending. Um, I'll be able to afford it pretty easily once I get to Deep Crest and drop this off. The bad news, though, is that uh, I was not the only captain that they were looking to fulfill shipments for pretty quickly. If I was a Believe guessing me. man, I'm probably not the only boat. Believe me, that uh, idea has crossed my mind, and uh, with all due respect, it is the only reason I haven't sabotaged your shipment. He kind of laughs for a moment, and then kind of ab uh, ends pretty abruptly when he his his passive perception or insight picks up that you are not kidding. Um, I'll, uh, I'll tell you I'll promise to send you a sending as soon as we get to port and tell you whatever I can. I appreciate that. That would be more than enough payment for me. You're welcome to have a look. Just please don't damage anything. I'd, uh, I know enough about it. I would prefer not to have to lay eyes on it again. You know the feeling. Well, uh, I might try and get some shut eye and, uh, again, tell the rest of your friends, the heroes. I kind of tip my soggy top hat at him yeah. and, uh, a little walk bit of out. Rain, a little bit of rain flops off and, uh, yeah, the scene wipes again. Um, so eventually, uh, those of you, um, uh, have your time around the, I'm gonna do mine too since Jen's doing it. Um, you guys have your time, um, Everyone mess, yeah, everyone mess with the camera while you're doing it. The, uh, you guys have a moment to um, do whatever you'd like around the ship. Eventually the hours pass, and just for narrative purposes, eventually you guys find yourselves together again, um, likely in your little hold down on the bottom um, of the ship. Uh, meals full from Tarakas' soup. Sorry, belly's full from Tarakas' uh, meal of soup. Um, Kaz is putting away, you can tell me what you're doing with the sextant, but uh, whether or not you have it out, whether you're putting it away, but the party is kind of together, um, ready, getting ready for a long, long rest. Sounds like some people might already be out and dozing. How big is it? I mean, I know they're not like, yeah. I know in reality, they're not really that big, but like, is it like his pot, like, would it it's a, fit like it's about head shaped right like we'll say the size of like a woman's basketball right um so um not gonna work so okay so the 
Are they uh, smaller? Yeah. Than a men's basketball? Yeah. Quite There's different sized basketballs? Today I, I chose the wrong analogy for this crew. Okay, so the uh, I know sports ball. <laughs> and that's is it I, like volleyball size? And that, that is and what they call that in football is what they call a hole in one. Um, they're not that much smaller. Yeah, but they're it's, smaller it's, technically. It's just, um, we'll just say. Um, Do you mean hand egg? How about this? The size of a musk melon. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Works much For all the friendly the viewers one, right? who might not live in the state, yeah, state in the state we live in, that's a cantaloupe. Wait a minute. Yep. Yeah. It's just okay. that it's made <laughs> and grown in Muscatine, <laughs> Iowa. So we call them uh, muscatine. I can't think of a third terrible but analogy. But they're separate. Yeah. You go to so, the store and there are cantaloupes and then there are muskmelons. So it's 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 you know. It's a breakdown. Though. Yeah, it's These not. These break down. Yeah, yeah. It's not quite. Um, it's not quite twelve inches, but you know, it breaks yeah, down. Because they like full. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Whatever. Um, um, they cool. say it's twelve inches, but it's really only about ten, uh, eight or ten. Uh, but that's normal. We all know. We all know that's a lie. Um, um, okay, so he'll like kind of he'll take it out because he's really super curious. He's never actually seen one, yeah. and he, you know, he's watched yeah. other people use them, but you look through um, it. He's gonna kind of play with it. You can look through it. I mean, it doesn't do too much down here up. in the in the uh, in the hold, but you can look through it and you can see something in it. And what, ha what it looks like is that this like little handle on the bottom that looks almost like a protractor kind of thing because it's measuring an angle. Um, when you move it, it actually locks one half of the sextant in place, and then suddenly there's something mo like it l moves uh, the other half of. Uh, um, uh, what you can see in the optic to like line it up. And what happens is it's almost like you can take something, lock it in, and then line it up with something else. And you can kind of see that that's Ooh. how, how be this thing works. Um, but you know, with a little bit of t uh, playing with it and with a little bit of um, um, help from other people in the party, um, over time, people can sort of like workshop how this, something like this could work. You, yeah. your, your, um, your tribe has always sort of known to follow star patterns. Something that in the clear skies like that, that's common practice. Um, similar, uh, probably the same thing with Lilith, only you're not used to stars that move. That completely fucks your head completely up. Um, the fact that these stars uh, are not stationary um, doesn't make any sense to you. Um, Felix, you know enough about, you know, a little bit about, you know, it's not your wheelhouse, but you know enough about math to be dangerous that you're like, I suppose if you took measurements here and here, you could probably make a triangle and figure out basically where you're at. Um, it just uses uh, simple trigonometry, no? Yeah. You kind of work your way through it, only to kind of end up that, you know, Kaz is sort of like, he would realize that, yeah, I mean, this is sort of what you do all the time, but if you weren't familiar with all the landmarks and didn't, you know, have a, have a position for yourself, this is how you could work it out pretty easily. This is quite fascinating. I'm literally watching a YouTube video on how the fuck you use a sextant. Uh, that's okay. Was, it's been a long time. I that's was, my guess. I'm pretty sure it's something like that. You're lining up things to measure angles. Yes, um, you're not wrong. Uh, I I look I looked at Wikipedia. Okay. Um, I know what they look like, and I kind of get a vague idea of what they do, but I don't really know. I have no reason to know. Me as a person. Okay. <laughs> no um, one else really do. It's crazy that how people got around back in the day. Um, but. Uh, yeah, this again to set the scene. It's still it's wet down here because it always is a little bit. There's um, two kind of oil lit lanterns with uh, covers, kind of um, dimly lighting, flickering the room. Um, you guys have a couple of hammocks that you've created tied to the posts. There's a lot of these gigantic crates um, with tarps covering them. Um. Can I grab one that's big enough to make a hammock for himself? Yeah, yeah. I take one of these um, tarps off, and it's the, one of the largest ones. It exposes one of these crates almost to to Felix's chagrin. This um, crate, you know, it's the side that's exposing this kind of triangle with a line mm -hmm. through it. Um, but uh, just kind of like looks at you. You know, the camera cuts back to Felix's face, a little bit closer you... back to the 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 brand, back to Felix's face, in closer to the brand, um, just to kind of like. But yeah, Kaz is, you know, easily making a hammock. Lilith, sorry, were you saying something? Is it... Yeah, Kaz had a hammock last night. Would it still be up? Uh, that's true, but there was only the that's one. True. Um, we could, you know, maybe there's more that are, that are, that are needed oh, for the geez. rest of the crew. 
Well, he used the, one of the tarps last night and made a tarp. That's a good point. And I do that's remember, how actually, Felix saw the box the first time. You're right. you're right. I forgot about that. Oh, you're right. I did. I, yeah, I did too. Well, good they... point, Lilith. I don't need to do this. No, how about this? Just to put it into character, <laughs> just put it to make it real, Kaz uh, gets done doing and making this perfect ha hammock, uh, turns and looks and sees that his hammock from the night before on the other post it still works, but now sees that everyone else in the party is kind of eyeballing his old cam his old hammock. I imagine Tarakis is probably curled up in it. Tarakis, oh, <laughs> fuck, that's perfect. Tarakis oh, is out like a baby, if you'll allow it, Tarakis, sleeping in Kaz's original oh, yeah. hammock. Just, just snoring. Because yeah, he slept on the floor the other night, the previous night. So, since nobody was down there, he meant he meant for this to be a nap. It's it's a long, a long, a, a long, long rest. That is, that is fine. He he more than earned it. He can definitely have the hammock. Do you think he's cold? It's Should we get him hard a that soup. blanket? It was great soup. Did you have some? I did. It was delicious. Sure. I'll have to tell him in the morning. It was excellent. It's the best soup I've had in quite some time. <laughs> of course, I generally eat leaves and berries that I find on the side of the road, so... But that was quite good. It was very good. So Are you going to set up sleeping here on the ground, or do you want to climb in the hammock? Actually, I was probably just going to climb on top of one of the boxes and just sit and watch. That is fair. Um... So did I make a second hammock then? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you have a hammock for yourself easily. Yep. Yeah. Um, is Nerd down there as well? I don't. Yeah, Nerd, yeah. what are you going to do before bed? Um, I'm going to fuck with the gun dials. Okay, yep. Um, give me a give me a tinkering check again just to see if there's any. You don't have a lot to work on, work from yet. Nineteen. But that's not so. Um, you uh, with a nineteen, you um, with a nineteen, you work out that you're like. I think I could probably work out an eventual sequence to test it, like you know, like brute force it, basically, right? As you're like, if I just did this every, you know, every, for an hour or two, every night, I could probably get this. And you do a little bit of math and you're like, I could get this before the, about a year you could do this. Um, if you spent two night, two hours a night doing one by one by one, every single position, and you're like, but it all depends on how fine of a, tu uh, how fine tuned it is. But the mechanics of it, because you can't feel like a click. You don't know where like a one or a two is, right? So it all comes down to how finely tuned it is. But you've chosen to do it as finely as possible, being meticulous with it. Um, but every night you're kind of like slowly moving it, waiting, hoping for some sort of audible tick or change of any kind. But you've got what you think is a sequence that would make sense to try one position at a time until something happens so that you can sleep at night to say, this thing fucking doesn't work when this is done. There is no answer, you know what I mean? But it would take, you know, every couple, every night to spend a little bit of time fiddling with it. Okay, that's what he'll do for the next year. Okay, but here's the, the mechanically, you don't have enough to go on. That's enough that you, can, you know how long to brute force it. You can do that. At some point you might hear a click but until you know a little bit more, until you know a little bit more, um, we won't do tinkering checks each time because it's sort of like a period of time that you're going to take to try and brute force it until there's more information, sort of, uh, that you can do more tinkering checks to, to get. That's all I'll say for now. How about that? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, it does take, you know, most of the time of the people have until it gets to be late. People are yawning. People seem to be getting comfortable. Um, uh, does anyone want to take watches? Is that something that people even worry about down at the bottom of the ship, having made friends with the crew? You guys tell me. I wasn't meant to be leading in any way. Felix will probably stay up and take first watch, naturally. Okay. Nara, do you think we should take watches? I mean, probably. I don't trust any of these fuckers. I think it's a good right. idea to take watches. Agreed. Also, like... 
Felix, are you like burning this shit? Are you throwing it in the ocean? What What's your current game plan with this stuff? Oh, you mean with the highly volatile narcar- narcotics? I'll say super loud. Yeah, sure. No, I just plan on letting the uh, captain hand it off. He now knows uh, what's in there, and uh, he knows the weight of his actions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we should still have watches to watch Felix. <laughs> I can hear it. I can hear like nerd take a step back, still looking at Felix. <laughs> Yeah, do yeah. Like the the sitcom version of this is that nerd's face is very understanding and just like yes, I believe you. And then immediately turns around and is like we need watches. <laughs> um, Thanks, Kramer. Yeah, yeah uh, Felix is probably just sort of like calmly taking his watch wherever you are comfortable. Um, taking taking first. I'll probably lean up against uh, a box. Um... And smoke. yeah, just kind of set up again against it with a smoke. Yep. Okay. All right. Everyone else's rituals for the night. You know, those of you, um, there's a small, there's enough heat that you could probably get some hot water for some tea uh, if you needed it. Anybody that uh, um, uh, has any other like nightly pipe rituals, you know, Lilith, if, uh, if there's anything else you guys are doing to get calm, you guys are welcome to, to do that. But um, uh, eventually, you know, Felix, you would uh, have your first watch. Yeah, uh, a, a queasy feeling in your stomach of just looking at these crates, knowing it's uh, this feeling of dread, knowing that wherever these things are going, whatever it is, it isn't good. And you have a feeling of, you haven't felt since, you know, being caught in a stream that at a young age, when the current was too strong to swim the direction you wanted to pull, and having to have that same feeling now, it doesn't feel good. But um, you kind of look around and kind of for the first time, there's some calmly sleeping people around you. Um, You think back to the different interactions you had today and all things said you've had worse days there's a quick flash of that kraken's like tentacle uh, as you're sort of like shudder as you're like I almost fucking died today but your watch is pretty quiet if there's, if there's no commotion unless you cause it I caused no commotion. Once uh, it gets to the end of my watch, I'll kind of... Who was on second watch? You probably have to choose. I don't know that it was really stated. Yeah, it wasn't established. Uh, I'm going to not nudge nerd. I'm going to uh, nudge Kaz and uh, just kind of take my pipe and just on top of Kaz's nose, boop Kaz in the nose. There's like a little rabbit moment of not waking up. And then, uh, yeah, Kaz, you're able to wake up. Is it my turn? It is. Let me know if shit goes sideways. I'm going to get some sleep. Dada, do you want the blanket? You can sleep in the hammock. It's uh. still warm. It's warm because I was in there. Uh, I know. Okay. All right. I'll take kindness when it's presented. Smart man. I'll like help hoist him up in there. Stay warm. Nighty night. Felix, go to sleep. And then uh, he'll sit down near the door and keep an eye on everything. And then he's going to get out his sword and just very methodically and stare at the door and just sharpen it. Okay. This is like this low kind of quiet grinding. Um, to anybody that would even be woken up by it, it's almost like a metronome white noise of just shh, shing, shing. Um, methodical, wipe, wipe, shing, shing. Um, it's a nice, almost meditative, almost makes a mantra uh, with a steady rhythm. Um, 
Uh, Kaz, you have another kind of uh, easy watch. Um, uh, is there anybody you're waking up when you're after your turn? Um, knowing that Lilith, are we, we're doing four Lilith? watches, right? Yeah. Um, knowing that Lilith tends to take third and fourth, um, he will gently nudge her arm at third and her eyes kind of Lilith. flutter open. Is it my turn? It is. It is. It is technically third. Felix okay. and I have already taken our turn. Are you all right to take like the last two? Yep, I got it. Darn it. I am going to bed down. Thank you. Okay. Have a good rest. Lilith, is there anything you'd like to do during your watch? Are you kind of like tra going from trance to just sort of uh, active watch. Yep. Come. Okay. That's it. You know, um, kind of watching the. Everyone kind of sleep. Um, it's always odd to watch people sleep, sleep. It never gets old. Um, it's still an odd sight um, in a world of oddities. Um, about halfway through your watch, um, Tarakas will stir, having gotten um, already at this point um, about nine hours of sleep. Um, you know, it's kind of early in the morning, but there's no sun down here. He doesn't know any better. Um, well rested, uh, Tarakas, you're able to wake up and you see that uh, Lilith is. Um, uh, just kind of keeping watch, just kind of calmly sitting there. Hey, Lilith. Well, good morning, Tarakas. Oh, why is everybody else sleeping in? Oh, I hmm. guess I... Whoa. Did I take Kaz's... Kaz's, uh, his bed? Did I... Oh, I That's didn't... okay. You, you were... You worked really hard on that soup yesterday. We all agreed it was delicious twice. and you earned it. I made two of them. Only one you made it twice? Well, the first time, oh, it just spilled everywhere. Well, you know the story. The, the, the big, oh, big... you were you made one before and then it spilled? Yeah, yeah. The giant noodle, the noodles that came out of the water. I ended up just shaking the boat so much, it spilled the soup and went, wasted so much of the vegetables and the broth. And hold on. Oh, oh, oh. Are they still sleeping? Yes. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Yeah. Is it? It must be. Come up. You have very rigorous standards for your mornings. Well, I mean, I could go back to sleep a little bit longer if you want me to. I mean, or you can keep me company, Tarakas. You have slept a long time. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I feel like it, but I, I really don't like boats. I've discovered that. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a big fan either. Other than yeah. seeing the whale. Did I tell you about it? Oh, the boat got bumped earlier and I didn't know what it was. And everybody was like, oh, it's good luck. And I didn't know what happened. Yeah, it was a whale. I'd never seen one before. And I got to talk to it. I mean, that's how I knew something. What was the look? That's how I knew something bad was going to happen. It told me to run. Well, that would have been handy to know before. I mean, I tried to tell people. They thought I was just crazy. I can see that too. I'm just saying. I don't think you're crazy. You're just very odd. Well, thanks. That's coming from me. <laughs> Kaz, you um, sorry, not Kaz. My bad. Tarakas, uh, um. While staying up with Lilith, sort of taking some time to to keep her company, um, you know, kind of preoccupying yourself to to pass the time. Probably, you know, going through your cooking utensils, scrubbing, you know, scouring whatever you can. Just you know, just like packaging, you know, cleaning everything up, making sure everything's in its place uh, in your pack. Just kind of like um, putting away the two gold that you know everyone had given you earlier. Uh, going through your uh, pack and your equipment, kind of like stowing everything away, you see that like in your pouch there is uh, this um, random stack of gold that has a piece of parchment wrapped around it. What's this? And Trakas, you oh, actually yeah. have something like this in your inventory if you want to check your random note. Um, the notes? Yeah, that's even your equipment. Uh, Felix, do you, while well, he's looking that up, were you? Oh, there morning it is. Morning, okay, yeah. yeah, just kind of like slowly packing up, packing your morning. Yep. Okay. 
Um, before we go to break, yeah, so the last uh, watch is sort of ending. Um, Felix, you kind of dig through, you're kind of getting everything cleaned up. Um, and you uh, come across that note. I'll, I'll read it silently, but... Uh, oh, you have a note, too. Yeah, Sorry. Felix has a, has a note as well. What? Does Felix have a note as well? No. Oh, I he thought comes you were across. talking to Felix. Yeah, were you talking to Felix or Tarak? I think you meant to say Tarakus. Oh, that's... No, I was like, Tarak, that whole thing was... Yeah, Tarakus is the one who has that. Felix... Yeah. Nope. yeah. Sorry, Felix, you said something, uh, and I was trying to, like, put you over here to be like, Felix is, like, uh, saying something over here, but no, Tarak is, is the one who's going through his pack, um, organizing all of his stuff, um, scouring his pots and pans, um, putting everything I'll, away. I'll yeah, I'll read the note silently and uh, just put the gold away. Okay. I'm sure I said Felix at some point, too. Um, so, yeah, the uh, uh, I was getting a lot of confused looks. I'm sure I said it. I probably said it more than once. Um, so you uh, um, you get this uh, kind of message, fold it up, tuck it away, put the gold away. Um, there is a uh, some more commotion up above, uh, on the floors above, that you guys can, it's really the only indication that it's between day and night um, on this boat, this far down below. And uh, um, eventually as the night passes, everyone can hit long rest. Um, and we're going to take a five minute break uh, and come back and talk about what you guys do on this, the likely last full day of the boat. Um, so um, we will be uh, back in about five minutes.
Right. Um, welcome back. Um, so we've got. Uh, <laughs> I'll go ahead and if you want to, Jen, if you want to like flip off and then come back on so you can see uh, Big T here. Um, uh, yeah, so you guys oh, no, are you're fine. Cool. So you guys can uh, come back from the this long rest um, after our break. You guys are waking up. It is um, uh, you guys have uh, one full day and change yet on this boat um, on the ship um, before you get to the uh, rough place where you guys want to disembark. Um, uh, we will do a um, 80s sitcom style montage of this day on the boat of uh, um, the sailors repairing um, you guys occasionally pitching in but mainly just kind of like watching and being kind of like congratulated and hailed and kind of you know hero worshipped on the boat for this day um, McKinsey kind of gives uh, Kaz a lesson on how to use this sextant um, uh, but uh, the day passes um the uh uh it's um it's a quick one there's no there's no cracking attacks it's um hot but calm seas um and eventually it is nighttime again and after a day of uh of um trying to keep your balance on the ship and um uh learning a new trade or a new skill you guys are pretty tired again and um um we montage through a full a full day of travel on this boat um the ship and eventually um, the following morning, the 66th, for those of you keeping track, which I hope we are, um, the, uh, that morning when you guys wake up, um, the captain, uh, kind of stops down in the, uh, in the morning as you guys are just waking up, um, and says, uh, and by the looks of things, I think we'll be, uh, in a position to maybe, uh, sit you guys off on a longboat around midday if, uh, if that's still what you all want, you guys don't want to come with. You sure we could use people like you? I think well, the long bolt will be good. Oh, sorry, Lilith. Please. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I was just going to tell him we're going to continue on our adventure. Yeah, we we definitely need to get off. What he said of the boat. Sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh. Um, well, if you if you want, um, Cookie's got breakfast. Uh, it's nothing like the uh, big tea's food over here, but um, if you guys want some uh, food up. Um, oh, say, speaking of that, I'm gonna check Carla's cage and see if she laid me any eggs. Yeah, there's two of them in there. All right, I got two eggs, you guys. Um, the rest of you. What's your favorite way to prepare them, Tarakas? Oh, you just you just crack them and then uh, you, you heat them over a hot stone and you eat it. Oh, that sounds delicious. Or you can just gulp it down. There What's you go. Faster, if you're on a, if, I mean, if you're on a, you know, in a hurry to eat breakfast in the morning. Quick acquisition of protein. Get those sick gains. <laughs> Uh, that's so good. So, um, the, is there anything specific you guys would like to do in the morning? I'm going to keep fiddling with my knobs. That's horrifying, but I know what you mean. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll get, I will, uh, uh, give my first two eggs to, uh, nerd. Well, uh, here you go, nerd. Just, uh, if you want to eat eat and have a quick breakfast, there you go. I, you I mean, you, you really like them, though. Oh, like, yeah. That's but, why you bought you the know, chicken. I, yeah, for future use. For everybody. How about you take one, I take one. Okay. Nerd will eat the whole egg, like, <laughs> shell included. Yeah, Yeah. Mario, Mario, <laughs> two, Mario 2 style. Oh. Just, like, envelops the whole egg and... Uh, and then there's like a moment where like you can see the egg go down his kind of skinny neck for a moment zoom, all in one piece It's pretty good. I love it. Oh, well, if you like the shell, I can give you mine. I'm not gonna eat the shell. Oh, fuck sweet. Okay. Sounds good I'll just crack it's very good egg. source of calcium yeah. slurp it down. He does like, the crack the top slurps it and it's just kind of an empty shell um, 
<laughs> there's some quick uh some quick chomps it sounds like a garbage disposal it's broken um but then it's it's then it's gone um it's just carla too Looking good job little... carla i'll feed feed water carla too yeah she'll eat some of it eat some of the grain eat some of the drink some of the water um, anybody else Kaz is gonna pack up his bag and you know put on what he needs to put on so there's less to carry necessarily but he has it all with him now okay okay um eventually uh the ship's crew all kind of comes by and says their goodbyes shakes hands and and, and paws um the oh housekeeping things really quick before i forget um that morning uh felix any serum 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 that's not your uh, accent, I'm sorry. Uh, but it should be. <laughs> um, I just can't do it well. Uh, I can't say anything other yeah. than serum. All right. I'll take I'll take some of this serum. Serum. I suck at it. I don't know how to say it any other words. Um, Lilith, <laughs> spells for the day? Disembarking day? Um, it's going to be the same old, same old, but I'm getting rid of Flame Blade, and I'm picking pass without a trace again. Okay. Tarakas, spells for the day? Um, I am going with Mad, Guiding Bolt, Healing Word, Aid, and Enhance Ability. Okay. Those sounds like winners. Um, yeah. Nerd, um, as you cast Gun, uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, you, uh, you, you, as you're prepping in that morning, you're, um, some of your scabs and stuff start to slough off. Like you can peel them off kind of in one big piece. Um, I eat them. Yep, I figured. I didn't, I was going to give oh. you the opportunity to say it. Um, and, uh, and, but you're healing underneath. It's like it's healed up. You're starting to like, it's starting to heal up pretty well, even though the, now that the scabs have healed over. Um, I knew it was going to happen, but I still had to do it. Um, anyway, so, yeah. But what do they taste like? No. Dusty, no, you know. No. <laughs> Crunchy yet death-like. Yeah, you don't act like you don't know. Um, so, uh, Tastes like erasers. Eventually, about midday, um, after getting some congratulations from the, uh, from the, the crew, you, are, um, you can see that it looks like Presley is um, starting to prepare and uh, pull up the longboat. So you guys can board it on the side of the ship. Um, is there anything you'd like to do before you leave the ship? The white rabbit's foot. You guys can see. Those of you can see. Kind of, uh, it's a, a way. These guys aren't getting too close to the shore, but you can see that there looks to be a coastline. Um, you know, not quite a. You know, not a mile off, but a ways off. Um, but you can see that there seems to be what looks to be some sort of like scraggy woods uh, along the beach, but you can kind of see that there's this expanse on the horizon, um, this kind of yellow-orange expanse, um, but that's all you can see from the rocking boat at this moment, a ways away from the shore. Hey, random thought. Um... Do we need, like, a lot of water in this place? Oh, I've got that covered. In, in case we do, oh. I'll, I'll need a day to prepare for that kind of thing. But just in case we do, oh, I've got it covered. that makes sense that, like, your watery sword-throwing lady would, like, be able to give you water. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. Are they coming? Is it... Does anybody mind if I take the oars? Or does anybody else want to? By all means. Oh, no, please do. I yeah, do I feel like you can, like, speedboat us there. Yep. Yeah, I could just go through the motions. I can't really move us. Prezi looks like he was about to, but totally doesn't argue. He's like, sweet. Oh, he just sort of, like, sits down. And he's like, all right, well, I only have to do this one way. It's fine. You will have to roll on the way back. I do not mind. Oh, yeah. I know. All right. 
We're there in a second. Yeah. There's like a <laughs> no. Kaz, um, Kaz's uh, strong sort of uh, for, uh, upper body just kind of like does sort of like get once he gets a rhythm, starts to is able to kind of crank this longboat across the across the water easily, kind of chewing up the distance between the the white rabbit um, and the 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 shoreline. Um, eventually, the longboat. Um, runs up on the sandy uh the sandy beach um presley is looks a little bit uneasy and sort of like is sort of like looking around and kind of like keeping an eye on the the, sh uh, the shoreline the tree line that's like um uh about a, you know about 100 yards away from the 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 beach um for this like these all these kind of like dead looking trees um there's not any leaves or foliage on them but you can just kind of look like um, the main trunk and main branches of, of trees off in the distance. Uh, but Presley's kind of like looking um, alertly towards them and says, uh, right, I think this is uh, where I get off. The boat? Well, huh? this is where I shove off, yeah. I'm leaving. Um... Kaz will hop out and kind of hold it still, just in case anybody else needs additional help getting out. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's on the shore. So like even Felix, um, it like hopping out, you don't have to get too wet. Um, you finally your shit's probably finally dry. Oh yeah, we probably... all we all get a little bit wet when we get off though. Yeah, naturally. We got a wet ass party here. Um, so the <laughs> the. Uh, it's hard. The uh, party disembarks from this longboat. Um, Presley takes a moment to say say his goodbyes too. He says, uh, "Look, um, just uh, be careful out there. All right, just take care of yourselves." It's uh, people say a lot of crazy shit about the wastes. Just who knows what's true? Uh, just keep your eyes open. Kind of like looks at all of you and says, uh. Uh, it was good to meet all of you, nerd. Best of luck. Uh, kind of bows to Lilith, kind of gives a flourish and says, Ma'am, you're not like any mel any elf I have ever seen in my life. You break every stereotype I've ever heard. Well, I'm glad to. Um, and uh, she kind of, he, he kind of, uh, does like the fake kiss of the the hand where it doesn't actually touch you, but like fakes kissing the hand. And as he does, so kind of backs away and says, um, don't, um, if you see any other elves, run. They're not, from what I tell, they're not like, he kind of looks at the rest of them, the rest of the party and says, they're not like this one. Would I have any background on oh, what he means? Okay. Yeah, you know, the, the elves are kind of known for being um, uh, in active rebellion in, in Zostra. They are uh, known for being, um, whether or not this is a prejudice or uh, a bias or whether this is based on any kind of fact, they're known for being... Um, Pompous ass motherfuckers. No, actually the opposite. They're, oh, be, okay. they're known for being sort of like uncivilized. They're known for being... Um, uh, uh, if they're like, think of all of the stereotypes that are, are negative um, that used to be applied towards like Native Americans or any other kind of indigenous people, uh, indigenous type peoples. Um, these are people that don't bother to speak standard. They uh, attack. They don't bother to uh, recognize any kind of political lines. Um, they uh, are known for even more recently kind of. Uh, pushing back on some of the boundaries in Eastern Zostra. Uh, they're just kind of known for being something to do a double take for. Um, you have never been surprised when people were taken aback by Lilith in any of these towns. Lilith is not like any of the elves you've ever heard of before. This is not an elven disposition. You probably, none of you have probably interacted with any of them. I think that's probably safe to say because they're tribal, and you probably haven't ever, any, ever seen any. So what you know of are these possible stereotypes, maybe we call them tropes, but that is what you know of them. And they does not, al does not align with what you've seen of Lilith. 
um, he kind of does the, the, the handshakes, gives you guys the, the nod, um, puts the oars in the water and kind of slowly like at about quarter Kaz speed takes the longboat back to the ship. Let your captain know that I'll be looking forward to hearing from him. I'll kind of shout across yeah. the water. I'll do that! So, you guys are standing um, on a, the shoreline. Um, let me update a map here for you. Yeah, so oh. we're here, but where do we go now? With with yeah. your gaudy person to have to say. Oh, uh, well, they just told me to to go to the temple of Anka and you know talk to the people there. Tell them I was a weary student. So I guess we're looking for a temple. Or like that one guy said, like a tower sticking, like the very top of a tower sticking out of the sand, maybe. Yeah, from what it sounds like, uh, there's really nothing out here, so any structure of any sort is going to be what we aim for, I think. Any of your magic fancy pants stuff able to help with that? Nope. <laughs> okay, okay, so we just, like, walk in and see what happens? I think so. Did that sexton have a telescope? piece to it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. That might come in handy, if only for the uh, lens alone. I agree with you. I don't have much practice in using it. Nerd probably knows more about it than I do, but we can well, at least see through it the distance. Wait, I know more about what? The sextant that McBride gave me. McKinsey. It's a doohickey that McBride. the person who navigates uses. That's fair. We can get it out. We can try. I don't know. If we can get to a high spot, I can uh, see what I can see. I think that's... We can all see what we can see. The wastes, I don't know much of them, but... I imagine the high ground is the best place to look for any odd structures. So to describe the, the scene, what you guys are seeing right now is a sandy, pebbly beach. And about 100 feet, um, there is not a, a real decline like a regular beach that you'd be familiar with. This is... Um, fairly flat level of just 100 feet of sandy beach then there is this tree line this tree line is um the best way to describe it is these well as you guys get closer i'm assuming you guys are it would eventually see this i don't think i'm going to push the narrative too far forward as you get a little bit closer to these trees you can see that they are in fact trees or at the very least they were they are um only the only the bodies and branches and those of you that get any closer than you know a couple feet can see that uh there seems to be strange fusings into the rock nearby um so the few rocks and uh boulders that are around seem to grow right with the trees um there is about another hundred feet of this trees and they're sparse. So you can see right through this. This is not like a full forest. You can see straight through this tree line. And on the other side is just rolling kind of shallow hills of these kind of sandy dunes. This is where we're going. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's rightly named. It looks like a waste. Yeah. You weren't wrong. I'll glare up at the sun. It's hardly Stygian. Hardly what? Stygian? You know, dark. You think that you look around and you you oh. you think it maybe the joke may be lost on some people that don't know the name of it, but you know, like all jokes that you and I tell, 
It's okay. We think it's funny. It'll be dark at night. There is much darkness here. So you guys are on the beach. What would you guys like to do? Yeah, like, what time? Well? Right. right, just find some high ground. Yeah, sounds like it's there's not bad. People wanted high ground. It is. It's about midday. Uh, still, just about high noon. It is very hot already. You guys can feel the heat. Um, and this is already next to the shore. Uh, if this is next to the shore, who knows how much worse it could get? But it is warm. It is midday. Um, there, there is some higher ground, but it looks like there are just like some dunes seem to be higher than the others as you see forward. Right now, it's this sort of very flat sh- um, shoreline. Is it arid? Is it a dry heat? Yes. Uh, yes, but it's like, it, this is the shoreline though too, so it's kind of humid right now, but um, you can see as you look past this, this forest uh, of like what were trees, that there's these shimmering lines that come from that type of arid heat because you can see, and you don't have to know that's like, you can see the water disappearing from it as you speak. Felix is going to turn right around and just walk into the ocean until he's about knee height and then just kind of free fall in. Just let himself get soaked. Splash a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so you guys watch as uh, this kind of um, uh, shabby but uh, uh, nicely dressed uh, uh, friend of your party just starfishes into the, into the, into the, the surf eventually emerges, oh, completely boy. soaked. Anybody else? It take long for your brain to get fried, huh? <laughs> no, I'm hoping this will uh, stave that off as long as possible. This seems like a foolhardy thing to do. Oh. Oh, like soak your clothes and then try to keep as cool as possible. That's a good idea. Yep. So I will follow suit. As you guys are soaking yourselves, maybe for the last time in a bit, what would you guys like to do? Um, Cass kind of wants to walk. Just for clarification. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. I was just going to go ahead and clarification first. The floor recognizes Tarakas. Um, so... <laughs> Dracus is going to be wearing his horsetail wig, making sure that that's all nice and soaked and wrapped around his neck. Mm. And then he's going to splash Carla, too, with water. Oops, oh, she, she kind of fluffs a little bit. I know bit. it's salty, but you need it. Um, Kaz, were you saying something? Oh, I was going to say, he kind of wants to walk up to the tree line. I'm not really sure how far away it is from where they're standing. Yeah. Um, But he wants to go up and just, I don't know, check out the trees more, yeah. get a better idea of what they are, because they obviously look dead, you said, so yeah. he's just curious, mostly. Yeah, um, you can go over Phyllis and check. Is following right behind him. Yeah, um, my <clears> guess <throat> is, before you say anything, is Felix sees people being curious about something, you're not about to be left behind, now that you're nice and wet. Um, are you also uh, following them? Uh, yes, but before he does that, he's going to take any of the empty flasks or beakers he has and fill them up with salt water. Okay. Okay. Um, fills them up. Um, so he'd be the last one to the parade. But yeah, Lilith and uh, Kaz, you can see that uh, these uh, this, these trees um, have the shape of trees. As you get closer, the colors on the insides are, are, are beautiful. And as you um, get close to some of them, you can see that some of them have actually broken or some of the branches have broken and fallen off over time. Um, and when they've fallen to the ground, they've actually shattered in some situations and broken. You can see that these trees have actually become stone. Um, and if anyone's been to like a petrified forest, you guys can know kind of what you're looking at here. Um, but these are trees that have been effectively turned to this kind of pretty stone. Dark, but still stone. To be clear, this is, they're no longer wood. 
nope. nothing that would hold any kind of value with trying to like kindle a fire. No, nope. this is petrified wood, mostly stone, okay. calcified. Okay. Maybe if you really needed something like that, there might be a few pieces of stuff like surf and driftwood. Um, but this would be the only place you'd find something like that. I would gather that then. Yeah. Any any kind of uh, driftwood I can find. I mean, to gather it, you could probably only gather and carry enough for like one night's worth of fire, but you could probably gather at least that. Maybe not That's even fine. a full night, but at least a few hours of fire. That's fine. That's all I need. Okay. Are we going to need fire at night if it's the middle of the summer? In a desert, probably. Need it? Oh, really? Yeah, deserts get, gonna get cold very, very shit. cold at night. <laughs> I don't live in a desert. I don't remember these things from school. Deserts are hell on earth. That like, what's the swing? They're it's frigid. like they're uh, frigid at night, and then they are sweltering during the day. Is it like you 50? can. Is it like fifty it degrees? Sounds... It's like it's it can oh, get it colder. Can, it can get down yeah. into the thirties, even lower. I, I, don't, I think it freezes, yeah, but it gets water. hella cold. And then, like during the, the in the winter, it definitely freezes. It can freeze. It's cold, but yeah, I'll, I'll say this, Kaz, you, you're the one that's been out there before. You know enough that it, that's the, the the waste is extremes. You also know another thing about the waste that other people maybe aren't aware of. You know that you don't spend more than a couple of days in the wastes. You just don't. A few reasons. One. Um, superstition. Two, reality, it's dangerous. And three, after a couple days in the wastes, you always feel like just total shit. And there's this like feeling of having to drag yourself out. And if you spend more than a couple days in the wastes, even Kaz with your strong constitution, after a few days, you're sort of like this feeling of needing to get the hell out before you're trapped there. So it like depletes you the way it does everything else. It's enough that you know it's not always just the heat because it does get freezing cold. At, yeah, cause you're also sorry. The reason I brought this up is because you can confirm this. You know, it gets hella cold at night and hella hot during the day. But this other thing that maybe not everyone knows about that, you know, that wherever you guys are going in here, you shouldn't spend too many days in here. Fire is a good idea. It is going to get extremely cold here tonight. And tomorrow again when the sun rises, it'll be absolutely awful with heat. And the sun will beat down. And there will be no relief from anything or any of it. This is not a welcoming place. And if we stay here longer than a few days out there in the wastes, we're not going to be able to come back. You won't be able to. This sounds like a terrible idea. Let's go back to the ship. You get, it's trying to wrap it. You guys see that there is, uh, right about that time, you see that it's enough, enough to see um, Presley uh, duck the longboat to the back of the ship, and you can see that the white rabbit's foot puts its sails down, <sighs> catches the wind, and begins to get smaller on the horizon. There's a wind that's kind of at your guys' face, Kind of blowing inward from the the, the ocean as uh, there's nothing else to really see that direction and then as the party turns around sees the wastes in front of them how would you guys like to proceed with caution that's fair <laughs> for this could... go ahead oh, go ahead Kaz right. I was gonna say we could follow the coastline for as long as it goes maybe see if we can find some high ground and if we do, we could use that to maybe use this extent to look out further. Maybe, just maybe, there are a lot of maybes. See if we can find this tower or something, some sort of structure out there that may lead us to, oh, on Ka or, or whatever it is that Tor needs to find. Don't you people pray or something for guidance? I can try. I don't know if it'll do any good as I've never uh, gotten responses before. I mean, I just would feel really silly if we didn't try that before putting ourselves in, in a stupid amount of peril. Oh, okay. Oh, Tarakas will close his eyes. And I mean, take your time. My god! 
my god, I would like some guidance, please. I'm trying to locate your temple. I don't know where to go. I'm in the waste, and I need some guidance. Anytime. You, um, wait for a moment, maybe two. And then, opening your eyes after you hear this prayer, there's, you know, you kind of blink for a moment because, you know, the sun is bright at midday and you kind of have this, like, after effect for a moment. You kind of blink a few times, kind of looking out, kind of clearing your, your vision. While you're clearing your vision, this, you can kind of see in the reflection of, in, the, in the ocean, this, like, kind of shallow edges of the water as you guys are about to walk away. Um, Maybe it's the after image that you're blinking away. Maybe it wasn't, but there's this sort of like light blue sort of like glow that seems to drift towards the waist in a direction um, and uh, um, then fade out uh, as quickly as you kind of notice it. Um, but there is, you don't know if it's new, a new voice in your head or if it's the memory of being pulled underwater but you hear a voice say, maybe it's just the narrator to the movie, just in time. Whoa, there's some things happening in my head right now, you guys. I'm remembering things, I think. Wow, is that easy? What's that? I don't know if it's that easy or not. I mean, maybe I'm just hallucinating already. It's really hot, so... But I think I might have a general direction. We can try heading up this way. And he'll point toward the blue haze that I had kind of seen as, as an afternoon image. Okay. Well, since we have literally no uh, more solid evidence to go upon, I say we follow the crazy person into the desert. Lilith is going to kind of look around and be like, are you talking about Tarakas? Yeah. Nope. And I'm going to follow Tarakas. I'm not oh. the crazy person anymore. <laughs> so, well, so the way that this, <laughs> so the way that this might work, um, and whether or not we have to go by these rules, because it sounds like this might be narratively a little bit different. But for these types of overland travel um, segments, I want to try something where, while you guys are traveling, you guys can take, uh, you guys can choose to take a few. Um, actions uh, while you are traveling. And while you guys are traveling, you're only able to do one of these, uh, but you can uh, choose. One of them would be the sort of the standard uh, tracking, which is this, you know, wisdom, survival, check. That's really more for following something. Uh, signs, you know, tracks, um, tra following the path of something. Navigate is another one that you could do which is an uh, is an int check, or you can use navigator's tools, or you know, um, or for this kind of situation, which we're about to get into, there might be other things that you're following for different reasons. Um, but the real thing I want to get into is while you guys are traveling over land, somebody else in the party, um, you can only choose to do one of these, but you could sort of keep watch, which is a perception check to kind of keep a lookout for anything that might be you guys might be encountering or might be in, sneaking up on you. You could also, as another option, make a sneak check. That would be a, a dex stealth check that would apply to the whole party for the party's stealth. Um, uh, you don't get to leave the party's like you're you're directing the party uh, for that their stealth stealth. And something else that might matter in a different party makeup. I don't think that will challenge you guys because of your uh, backgrounds. You can also hunt and forage while you're traveling. Um, you guys have some means, I think, to kind of do that effectively so you don't have to like, roll for it, so you don't really need to do that. But the reason I bring that up is because I do want to have you guys roll either navigation or survival, like for tracking, right? Um, so that somebody's rolling a check so that we can find out if you guys are able to stay on course or whether or not you guys are getting lost in this like overland kind of wilderness travel. Um, what I... I, I say all that to just break it right away. Sounds like everyone's following Tarakas and his intuition a little bit right now. Is that fair? Mm. 
Maybe he's <laughs> keeping an eye peeled while he's following Tarakus. Yeah. Can I can I ask? So you're saying one person can track slash navigate, one person stalls, one person lookouts. What was the others? Uh, so I know the I know the foraging one, but that doesn't really yeah, come into uh, play. Navigate, track, hunt, forage, keep watch, or sneak. Those are, the, those are the active traveling things you can do. You can only do one, and you don't have to do all of them. You don't also have to do anything if you don't want to. The point is, like, um, one person is going to be getting chosen to do either a, a tracking or a, a navigating. If you guys want to try and combine and do, like, multiple things, um, I could see a world in which one of the two of you would give the other advantage. So it's still one person rolling for the are you getting lost or not. Does that make sense? That was yes. That was kind of my next question, just to clarify. So we could could we, because I'm okay if we can't. Sure. Could we help somebody and give them advantage? We yes. can do that. Yeah. Okay. So like narratively, cool. it sounds can, like yeah. Go ahead. I wanted to ask before I fuck that up. No, can we good. help them and have our own action, no. or is helping them okay? Okay. So our action is to aid them to do something because aid is technically an action, yes. right? Yes. Yep. Right. You're spending okay. that time well, helping that them. Sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. This is also just me kind of like we're really kind of running just a barely yeah. off the regular overland travel. So I'm just kind of seeing how this works. It's also like I'm stealing from Sam. This only really works at this level. <laughs> so like I'm doing this while we can, because otherwise you guys aren't going to be you guys are gonna be teleporting all over the place. So do, get it while you can. Um, oh, cool. That being said, sounds like based on some eyebrow twitches that maybe Kaz is using the sextant to maybe just double check where they're at. Just maybe just double check wherever, track your guys' position so you guys don't get lost. Navigate, like, basically where you were and where you're going so that you can know that you're not doubling back. So I have a, oh, okay, that makes sense. So we know where, yeah, okay, got it. I was like, how does navigation come into play when you don't know where you're going? Yeah, because well, well, navigation yes. is really just charting your position among the stars, so you can almost yep. just be plotting where you're going. Um, who would actually like to be the one Rolling, I would allow a religion type check for maybe uh, Tarakas with advantage. I would also allow maybe Tarakas to give with his intuition advantage to Kaz charting out and looking through this sextant. It's up to you who wants to roll. So just so for um, if I want to look through the sextant and like I we wanted to do that, let's say we decide that'd be a survival check for me. Um. Because survival is, it's check to follow tracks, guide your group through particular wastelands, predict weather, yeah, avoid quicksand it. and other natural hazards. Yep, I'll allow it, because otherwise that's going to be yep. hooked into your int stat, and that probably sucks for you, and that's stupid. Let's uh, let's do that. Um, Which one's better for well, you? Well, I mean, if you, if you want, well, he's actually yeah, pretty good. If you wanted to do nature, because, like, I, I don't know, either one, I don't, it doesn't matter. He's um, proficient in nature and survival and stealth. I think survival. what you're saying, what you're saying, Lucas, is if you did the int stat, it would still be a survival roll, but with int instead of and that gets to be complicated. Wisdom. Yeah, and I'll I'll play with okay. that offline. Yeah, but like for now, okay. you go ahead and roll your survival because okay. that's probably a good stat. But that's I'm okay. just trying to make a lineup to with what's written. That's here. cool. What I'm not too worried about you it. Want to you've already do. got advantage, so you've got a pretty good uh, plus on it. So I'm not too worried about it at that point. Go ahead and make sure you roll okay. two and keep one. Um, right. While you're doing that, just so you guys know the mechanics, what's happening here is that there is a set DC for a given landscape. While you guys are, what she is essentially doing, what Kaz, he is doing, is navigating to see um, if they, whether or not they get lost. On a hex map, what will happen is if he fails this, what's a total? 13. So, uh, with a open desert, it's not too hard to keep your land uh, to keep your landmarks. Uh, at least not at the moment. So this is not a super high DC. You're able to keep track of where you're going. Uh, you don't get lost. The um, I will tell you that you're close, Kaz. Um, so like Kaz, there's a moment where he's like, I think it's uh, this is my first time using this, but I'm pretty sure that we're going in a straight line away from the coastline. Kaz is. Um, being guided by Tarakas, who is sort of like, maybe you're just following your after image now, blinking, but you're pretty sure that you felt like it was in this a given direction. But you're pretty, you don't know how long you'll be able to re- remember the, which direction this sort of mirage was directing you in. 
Um, okay, so what was your total? 13, and you guys uh, go 13. to... So that passed. Let's go to the map. Um, where would you like to go on the hex map? I... Yeah, whatever direction the Mirage was going, if okay. that's what... If Tarakas is saying that it's going that direction, he's going to use the sextant to try and get bearings for that so they can like kind of make a map of like well we've gone this far from point a now we're to point b so now we kind of have that at least in our heads of where we're going okay. and the blue dim light thing that he can see is moving that way so he'll follow it if that's okay. what taraka said yep and it all kind of lines up so um you go for about four hours um it's uh uh, the sun starts to g drop um, at the end of your uh, of the leg of this um, of the leg of this journey. Um, this many hours in, you can see that the dunes behind you now um, have you know kind of risen up, and that you cannot see the ocean any longer. So now, this many hours in, it is dunes behind you, to each side and in front of you, and the party realizes that you are now completely at the mercy of Kaz and this new tool and this thin lizard and his intuition um, and trusting him that he is not just following uh, the afterimage of this bright red sun that is now setting um, over, the, uh, over the horizon. What would you guys like to do as it gets to be a little bit... Go ahead, Kaz. Something... He's gonna crap his pants. <laughs> yeah, Kaz is suddenly like... How how would you react to that? Like, are you is Kaz sure of himself? Is he letting on that he's like aware of this like responsibility that he's got now? As he looks around everyone and sees that this is all on you now. He's not used to being around people and having people follow him, so it is definitely a new thing. And he's just like, well, <laughs> do my gotta do what i gotta do i guess fuck it okay. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> we're out here and we can only be here for so long before we're just gonna probably fucking waste away so this nope. will be a great way to die if that's what happens so kaz is um uh, but he has been here before right i yeah. mean like he's been in and out of the waste so yeah. he's He's like mostly confident that if something happens, he will do what he can to get everybody back out. Yeah, Kaz usually stays on the edges for the most part, but the, like he usually can stay where he can see the edges. Kaz, you have never probably been in it where you cannot see with your own eyes where out is, um, but you have been here before, which is something of a comfort. Um, more than probably anyone else who is now um, at the end of this, uh, was you guys are probably it's about time to start looking for some sort of shelter considering what your camp might look like um the temperature as soon as the sun is below a certain point you guys can almost feel on your skin the temperature start to dip and drop um and you guys get like goose pimples um on your on your forearms um those of you that don't have scales um the uh uh temperature plummets um, where are you guys looking for uh, shelter? As you guys can see, in all directions, these dunes, even underneath your feet, the the winds kind of like moving the sand, and kind of changing the landscape around you. This yellowish orange sand, um, the occasional you know black rocky crag is really all that you can see. Um, where are you guys looking for shelter of any kind? Can Felix keep his eyes peeled for anything that would look like good shelter and or a tower? Sure. Yeah. Um, you did not do any of the navigation things, right? You right? Right. Okay, he was. A, that's cool. Just keep his eyes peeled. So during this four hours, you will be taking the uh, what is it actually called? Uh, there's a term for it. I'm use the right thing. It was keep watch essentially, <laughs> which is uh, a perception check, um, wisdom perception check. Um, go ahead and roll that beautiful bean footage. And your total? 17. Um, so you can see that with a 17, it's uh, noticeable that these dunes don't take much as you kind of 
tra um, go over the crest of one. It's almost dangerous, like at the very top of one, because the wrong step you can kind of like causes a sand fall, and it all kind of shifts. And you can you're amazed how quickly the landscape can can change given a uh, so an impact here or there. Um, there are kind of these natural wind carvings um, that kind of create these dunes. You see that there is these rocks are. It looks to be kind of like pillars almost that have been worn down um, into these kind of smooth shapes from the from the wind over time. Um, your total was uh, a night. What was a nineteen? A total. Seventeen. 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 Um, uh, that's exactly enough to see that there is. It's hard to see at first because of these heat mirages, but as the sun goes down, you can see that there's occasionally these ravines that are dry but you can't really see them because they're flush um with the rest of the landscape it's almost like the the dryness has kind of pulled this pulled the the the, the ground apart kind of causing like sand kind of fills in but it kind of causes these little gullies think like tatooine right um some of these like you know um where like there's obviously rivers a long time ago sort of the same sort of thing here where um now that the sun is down you see that there is if nothing else a wind break um but not much that escapes the heat um, uh, and, uh, during the day. Um, you don't know what it's going to be like at night. Uh, look over there. If we're looking for shelter, I think that is our best bet. And I'll point over towards the ravines. Okay. You guys just kind of see like there's like what looks to be a shadow in the rock. Oh, good eye, Felix. Yeah, we'll head over there, I guess. Hmm. Did you notice anything? Any? Not no, that we should worry. I have creatures. I have counted roughly seven billion grains of sand, and that is it. Only. Well, what I've counted. Hmm. I suppose the ravine is better than anything, right, Tor? I suppose let's go that way. Yep. Okay. You guys start to head towards. Oh, it doesn't seem that bad so far. You guys uh, make your way towards this um, kind of shadowy uh, ravine, um, uh, making your way towards it. Tarakas is kind of commenting on this place isn't so bad. Um, I think Lilith, you have the highest passive, right, by far in the party. Yeah. Um, I think so. So uh, it's over eighteen. Yes, it's like a twenty. My passive. Yeah. Oh, that's Tagen's. Oh yeah. Sorry. What's Lilith? Fourteen. Oh, is it, well, who's got a passive perception here? Mine's 14. I think 14's the highest you got. Mine's 14 as well. I think it's just because... I'm sorry. I'm just a different... Well, I think I was assuming a different... Wait for my next expertise. Too, too many campaigns. Um, still, with the, the, the highest perception, um, it's yeah. it's lit. You have, you know, your eyes uh, being elven more than anybody's. Um, about the same time that Tarakas makes this comment, everyone's kind of, like, hopping down into this kind of, like, six-foot deep ravine. Um... You're the only one that sees way off in the distance. There's a dune that this kind of like massive mound kind of like it looks to be a sandfall at first, but then this massive dune just sort of like and then the dune is just like flattens out, but it's so far away it that you don't. What? The dune is like the dune sort of like moves, and then just like flattens mm -hmm. out. Sand sharks, oh, no. graboids, and that's Beetlejuice. but it's so far in the distance. This was easily a mile off in the distance, and it was mm -hmm. not a mound. This was a dune-sized mound that settles out. Dune-sized mound. Okay. So, did anybody else see that? See what? What? Where? Uh, like a mile off, there was like a, a dune, but then it was flat. 
Is that Quite what you're saying, Lucas? Like, yeah. So imagine like, like flattened out. Yeah, just because I mean, try, I think my video is not catching up right now, so I can't. I don't have oh, my, visual right now. Oh, it's okay. My um, uh, I'll narrate it for you. So um, Trent I already kind of called it out. So like, this is a, it, it's not spoilery. Those of you that have seen um, any version of Frank Herbert's Dune um, would have seen this sort of animation before. This is a um, or nah, it's a spoiler for the re most recent uh, Mandalorian. So um, this is a what looks to be a massive molehill. If a mole was the size of um, like a woman's basketball. whale, we just saw like a whale. You a just whale? saw. <laughs> okay, it's a woman's basketball. Yeah, don't think uh, less less graboid, more sandworm. Like the sandworms in Beetlejuice. That's Actually, what I was thinking the whole time. Holy shit! Didn't mean to. But that's the closest thing you should probably be thinking about. Okay. But you will see it. I'm talking for reference. This is the you know now that you get the trope that I'm g giving. You see a sand dune move, and then collapse like it wasn't there. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to finding that. So you guys are um, making camp, it sounds like. Or are you telling the party what you saw? I think so. Yeah, I'm telling the party what I saw, and they're probably just all going to give me that look like I'm crazy again. No. So you saw a dune disappear? Yeah, it was the strangest thing. It was, it was there, and then it just kind of flattened out like, the dune wasn't there to begin with. So is the sand. But I swear place. I saw it. So what yeah. you saw was something move there? under the sand. Almost, yeah. Or something opened up underneath the sand. Could it be? Cavins oh, out here. That's yeah, a should... possibility too. Did we head over there? Either way, no. there was change on the horizon, and we probably should be cautious of it. Mm-hmm. Wait, was this behind us or was this like further into the waste that you saw it? Further into the waste, like at least a mile. In the direction oh, we've been heading or? Yes. Roughly Question in the direction. Mark? Yeah, roughly in the direction you're yeah. heading. Farther in. Well, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's the tower. Oh, could be. Maybe. Yeah, maybe we should over, head over there. Uh, I don't think so. Distances are hard to judge in this place. We should maybe well, check it out in guess. the morning. Yeah, yeah. The temperature, as that, as you guys are saying that the sun fully sets, the temperature kind of completely drops, and uh, those in the party Ooh. start to shiver as the temperature begins to get cold. Felix is gonna start uh, using what little driftwood he found to make a fire. Okay. Um. So he has to offer up his cloak if anybody wants it. Because it's pretty big. Yeah. So, like, we huddle. We huddle, everyone. We can be under the cloak. Oh, it's okay. I'm going to put up my two man tent. Also, very helpful. I'm very glad that you have that. Trust. Yeah, I had a second one. I think I gave it to Lilith. Did you? Oh, you did! Lilith spends a moment being jealous of this tent and then being like, oh, wait! And she looks back and, like, pulls out of her, you know, like, <laughs> Pulls out of her own pack like a couple tent stakes, like and she's like, Ta -da! "Somebody may help you." But yeah, you guys are able to make your camp. Um, it is probably the best camp that you guys have made, even though it, the conditions here are not the best. Um, everyone is extremely thirsty after their long trek. Everyone probably drains whatever water they had um, uh, pretty easily, knowing that. Uh, there's a means to get more, um, but uh, just so everyone knows, everyone's probably drinking whatever water they had in any skin or that they had prepared. Um, I know, Felix, you, you might be setting up some sort of experiment overnight. I think I have a feeling where you're headed with this. Uh, yeah, he's going to use his uh, distillation beaker, uh, put some water in it, boil it so that the water separates from you're the salt. You're doing the third word, the, you know, whatever that, I can't remember the reaction to like make the thing stick to the salt water so that it all lands on the bottom and you've got drinkable water and like sludge that you can pour off. Yeah, literally just, just distilling off the salt 
salt takes long. Or oh, you're actually distilling high. it. You're boiling it off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then into a separate beaker. Oh, well, that's turn, lower turning five, into a but of water. just as viable. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, um, for the record, if you guys haven't seen what they do to clean out water now these days, it's crazy town. Um, yeah. Uh, so the. Uh, uh, this pot of kind of boiling off water, but you guys would know that any of you that have spells, it might be a good idea to be able to make more water in, in future days. Um, is there anything else flavor-wise you guys would like to do as you guys are kind of bedding down to take this watch as it gets very cold? Well, you um, know, just so you guys know, I've got access to a number of spells that I can prepare for tomorrow. So if you think of anything that would be handy, I'm not used to this climate. Just let me know. Something. Do you have something that would make water? Yes, I'm. I'm gonna prepare that. Don't worry. Okay, what I will do that. Then. Food. Yes. We could I probably can't. use that. I can't do that. I'm sure. Hold on. I'm pretty sure to... that that's your synergy there. I think that Lilith can find you food and water if it had to be, um, and and uh, Tarakas can create you water. Yeah, I mean I can create water as well. That's yeah. why I'm like. Tarakas and I need to coordinate. Oh, okay. We pick can you forage? Can I? Don't you, or don't can you have like a back? Does somebody have a background that you can just find stuff? Outlander. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. If oh. the if the terrain provides small game food, water, and stuff, I can find it. Here's why I bring it up. I don't think you need to burn a spell slot. I think you can find f food, and if you needed to, a little bit of water. You know, if you needed to at night, you know this. It would, it's a very foreign, how about this, just really quick for some flavor, um, at the end of your like two hours that you go to like forage or whatever, just around the place, uh, Lilith would come back with a couple of like, um, bleeding poke marks around her hands, um, but she's very excited to show you guys that she has um, split apart this plant, which is, a, you guys, Kaz knows to be a cactus, that it is half full with water and it's sweet. She's also got some like twigs and roots and, and things like that. Not, not not much, but enough. Nothing like cool. cactus water. It'll help. It's won't, water. Won't be enough, but it'll help. Um, so <laughs> I think we will end there. We'll do the watches and anything else. We'll pick up there next session. Um, uh, what I'd like to try, and I know I said we were going to do it. Let's clearly do it this time. We are going to uh, um, uh, take like a two minute break and we are going to come back live and do 30 minutes of like table talk just to like talk about the session or something like that, right? We'll just do it live, okay? Is that cool? So we will we'll take a quick two minute break and we'll be right back with like a uh, metagame uh, after, after talk session kind of thing. Is that, care? Is that cool? Yep, sounds cool. good. All right, we'll be right back.
right. All right, so yeah, welcome back. So um, I think I'm gonna call this is the meta game. I think this is what this is gonna be the meta game uh, in the haphazard channel. So I think this is what I'm gonna call this section. Um, so what the point of this is really is just to talk about tonight's se session. Um, it can be um, anything, comments on things you liked, um, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, you can, we can keep it to things that are constructed. Like we can talk about tonight, the uh, mechanics of overland, you know, exploration. Um, let's not go full session zero on me on live TV, but like, I, you know, I'm, I'm cool for hearing things that you guys like and don't like. Um, happy to workshop stuff in front of people. We're all pretty fucking mature as D and D parties go. I think that'd be nice to showcase people that too. Um, um, but uh, yeah, uh, I love tonight that I was worried about not having, um, uh, oops, pulling on the cable, that might be important. Um, I was worried about um, there being too much time on the boat and like kind of shuffling people for, and not having enough, right, on the boat between like getting, all the notes that I prepped for tonight was like stuff for the uh, wastes and I'm spending the whole time worried about trying to shuffle people forward and tonight was a perfect example of like some of my favorite sessions are the ones where I don't have to do shit like I am literally sitting back and letting you guys talk and create your own situations and just kind of like putting icing on a cake every like at the end beginning and end of every scene and tonight was a, a good example of well, one of the sessions that you guys just kind of like filled up the entire session like we just are getting to my notes that i took for tonight in the last like 10 minutes which is the best kind of session right because now i have a whole week to, to to make the next one but i don't know i liked you guys rp it was good um i like the mechanics of the overland travel i might i might look into it more so like just I like how it reminds everyone of like these are all the things you can do other than roll a survival check as you travel forward. Yeah, you know. But I guess I was confused. Like I need more explanation on that. Yeah, yeah when yeah. we do it, we we need to take a roll. I mean, I get that. Like, yes, we could only have one roll taken, and I get that. But like, I almost feel like it's like almost like equipment slots, right? Or like assigning people roles. Yeah. Where like yeah. we really should all fill one in if possible. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That makes sense. I mean, I guess. I, this is there was, a, there was nothing else I was going to be doing besides navigating, and then Kaz rolled for it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's that's good because she probably has a better plus than I, or he probably has a better plus than I do. You guys have the same. If you'd wanted to, oh, you, right. I mean, you could have totally. I think I was trying to figure out that. something else to do besides that, and I'm like, yeah. Like, I didn't mean to like steal your thunder. Like you could have totally. No, oh, no, I, 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 I think it's to figure out like you're used. I think your guys are actually all, all correct here because like. You guys do all, all share the same kind of lead stat, so it's almost thematic. Are you guys tracking someone or following someone? It might be one of you guys rolling. If you're tracking things celestially, it might be Kaz doing something. If it's this kind of divine intervention, or, or you know, or just um, you know, if it's some other reason, it might be Tarakas. But thematically, it doesn't really matter to who's doing it as long as mechanically we get the the one roll. I think it's totally fine to shift roles. Um, but to, to what Trent, I think, is saying here that makes sense to me is like what Felix did worked. But um, if one person is the only person who's guiding and seeing whether or not they get lost and we don't need to hunt and forage, someone should always like you should always be either keeping watch and mo multiple people could do that is what you're saying. Like, take take one or try yeah. and sneak, hide us or something. Because what would make sense I, is for, like, this is just, this, this is the metagame, right? So yeah, that's what this is for. <laughs> what, would, what would make sense is for the survival heavy folk, which is Kaz, Tor, and Lilith, to figure out who's taking what, because they all have the same survival score, yep. for at least right now they do. Yeah. Um, and then if we split up the stealth, it's either going to be me or um felix for right now because we both have plus five. Oh, you guys have a plus five yeah right nice. so um and i don't know where I, I would assume i don't know if your expertise is going to go into stealth or not i know you said perception would be the next one but perception is the next one for me for sure so then really what sh what should happen is like the best way to do it would be to have tor and kaz support each other on the survival navigation -y part right whichever way that works Eventually, it would end up, I think, being Tor doing it because his will go up with wisdom. But for now, it's either. And then Felix is doing Felix has got to figure out. I assume he's going to go with perception if he doesn't expertise stealth eventually. And then Lilith would just choose which one between Felix and I to aid. Mm -hmm. You got it. 
That would yeah. be the most strategic. I'm saying we don't have to do that. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, that's 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 the optimal. Honestly, it's a roll sometimes. I don't want to just sit around. Yeah, that's what I'm so everyone yeah. would be rolling. So here's what I'm thinking. I just put a pasted into our Discord channel, the 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 DM. It's a GM binder. So you credit where credit's due to this person since we're using it. Um, oh, man, I have a name that's easy to pronounce. Uh, Gyutan, G-Y-U-T-A-A-N, travel and exploration light. This is essentially a take on what's in the DMG with a few extra things, um, individual skills, a little bit, I think it's a little bit easier to digest, even though it is essentially rules as written in a, in a, in a way. How about this? The only one that I don't want doubled up on, that I want to have somebody give advantage or aid or something, is the navigation or tracking, whether or not you get lost. I don't mind if multiple people want to take a keeping watch or something like that, but if it's easier to keep it all straight so that there's only one of each of these and you can choose to aid or not, that's fine. But I mean, for you know, I get what you're saying, Lilith, that it's not always fun to just always aid somebody. You kind of want to roll a dice. Um, totally get that. Mm -hmm. I have another. Old. But with this system, Lucas, can I check? Like, how often per day of travel are we rolling? Twice. Just yeah. one, right? Every, oh, four twice? Hours, every four hours okay. we do this. There's another thing that's and, not uh, on. Go ahead. Ask your question. Uh, just the, the other question I had was can we assist somebody if we're doing something else? No. Like, if I'm navigating, can I assist? Nope. Okay. So the way, that no. No, that's a good question, though. So, like, I didn't understand. Essentially, what you're happening is for that four hours, you are taking one of those actions for that four hours. You're, you're taking that role is the best way to, to do it. And for that four hours, you're doing that thing. So you're, you're having to pick one. Yeah. Um, mechanically, what's also happening is that, like, essentially for random encounters and things like that, you know, there are a few planned and then there are a few random. I've already done all that um, to steal a page from a couple other DMs. Like, I've already rolled all those. So it will look like it's not random, even though that's what's happening with the perceptions is are you guys going to encounter something, yes or no? And also based on the way that you guys have rolled that day, is it combat encounter or is it non-combat encounter that you guys are encountering? So encounters are really anything. It could be an interesting landmark. It could be a thing that's not hostile. It could be, you know, things like that. So that's kind of how your roles are impacting the world around you a little bit. Okay. Um, what else? What else do you guys like about the, uh, the session today? I've, I liked the some of the scenes with um, first of all, kudos to you guys about the virtual D and D. Uh, you know, you guys are doing very good about not talking over everybody. Even though this is a session of people being excited, knowing to talk, that was good. Um, I like some of the growth. I like the cheerleading from Lilith. I like the um, I like Tor cooking and like being this sort of motherly figure. Can I start rolling for that? Yeah. Why is it the mom who has to cook? Roll to burn no, the soup. Mother Lee is sort of like the, the fact that that's ah, a good point, <laughs> not to gender it. It's sort of like the fact that he cooked and like kind of changed the entire mood of the crew just by getting warm food into like, to, since we're already in stereotype mode, I'll just say it like the kind of stereotypical Jewish mother of like, come in, get some food in you. Like the, that's not like, that's nothing wrong with that. The, you know, like, get, know, some, get some food in your belly. Like, come on, like, Tarak is kind of taking this sort of, making sure that the soul of the ship was fed. I like that. You um, know what my favorite part was? Yeah. You heard Kaz's full name for the first time. Yeah. I tried oh. writing it down and I couldn't. I, I couldn't it write is. it down. It was That's too long. Like, I have no idea what that was just said. But okay. I don't know if anybody cool. else heard it, but Mackenzie heard his name. Yeah, good. It wasn't right. for, it wasn't exactly. for you. Mackenzie heard it, and the players did, but none of the characters yeah. know. But yeah. I thought it was cool that you dropped that. And I was like, ooh. Uh, Kazano Aid? I butchered that. I know I did. <laughs> yeah. So that was later. a good try. Like, if you never heard him say it before, and you're like, I know those were words, but. I was like, no. no Roll up. Right. Tongue, hello, well. Any questions? How about this? While well, you guys keep going, any questions in chat? You guys are welcome to ask any questions. We'll we'll answer them quick. If you guys have comments or questions for the crew, we'll we'll we'll, we'll be sure to answer them. Um, I, I will I will say in character, Tarakas is surprised at Nerd's attitude at his 
at the note in the five gold that he that he left. Yeah, he doesn't know how to take that yet. How do you guys? It's been there for that? two sessions, yeah. bitch. I, I had to heavy hand it because, like, honestly, I don't go through my my equipment. You didn't list have to either. heavy hand it. No. I would. You could let that simmer for two months, and I would have been perfectly happy. But it's a different. Here's the thing. Here's, here's why I did that. I, I that also works, <laughs> but. I want that character grow. I mean, because it's also going through stuff. Like, you'd see something. Like, you'd see if you have a giant notebook in your wall, like a piece of paper in your wallet that's bigger than your the money in your wallet, you'll see it. And, like, um, also just, like, I don't want to leave that payoff, right? Because the moment was close, and I want to have that emotional punch to not just Tarakas, but Gav. Like, I want him to also have so that punch. So I guess for the record... Do you, so other people would know yeah. Gavin read that if you want to. It doesn't really say anything. No, we get like too crazy. This, this is meta game. We can keep it separate. Like, but this is what. Oh. So yeah, this was, I the, was just gonna to tie yeah. it all together while he pulls this up. A couple sessions ago, you guys remember that nerd took took a piece of paper, wrote something in it, wrapped it wrapped it around some gold, and like stashed it stealth of like sleight of hand. Um, this is what that that note was. I've been waiting I for might it. have deleted it already. You deleted it? <gasps> How dare you? Shut the fuck I deleted it. It's fine. Guess what? Now you have to. No, nope, no. I... Now Tarakas has to re remember it to the rest of the group. What did it say, T? Um, it said something about how he was sorry about the emotional distress that he caused with shooting the chicken and how he's trying. It said. Sorry about the emotional distress with the chicken. I promise I'm trying. You are bestie, nerd. I love it. That is going to melt my heart. Yeah, it punched me right in the stomach when he sent it because he did it right away. I was like, oh. Um, you guys know me in D and D. I feel it do you all. Think nerd likes hugs. Feel it all. No, I do not think he likes that's, hugs. That's also that's also the types of shit that nerd wrote in. Tarakas's journal as well when he stole his journal that one night as he went through and every time he saw the word nerd or goblin he replaced it with like great guy best person ever my yeah. best friend <laughs> uh, we've all done that to the, to the, the, to the yearbook um, I love it the chat um, seems to really enjoy the cactus juice um, which is hilarious to me that it is always the random bullshit that we come up with that is never written down and not planned that always goes over the best those are always the most fun NPCs those are always the most fun random things, like the the um, uh, the bartender that had um, tequila that invented tequila, right? Like, uh, I don't play <laughs> that. Like, I don't know why that. Whatever. Um, but yeah, that was good. Um, are we playing the same time next week? Is it a Wednesday thing? I've started to plan the session on um. camera. But are we playing the same time Possibly. next week? Uh, let's see. Possibly, because Gavin and I were thinking going on of next leaving week? on Wednesday. Christmas, I think. A holiday of some kind. What yeah. is Christmas? Candle nights or something? Candle night. Christmas. Chris must play D&D. &D. Yeah, no shit. Um, but we will play at some point next week. It's just a matter of we'll find a day and, 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 and communicate it out. Um, any other questions, I guess, for like... Uh, the co our comments about the the session tonight, um, or what do you guys want to drop for uh, for some scheduling? This was good. Tell a friend. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, uh, taking part. Um, the followers you, you are guys. climbing. You guys are amazing. Uh, keep. You guys uh, are my friends. I was gonna say this. Is, all my friends are right here. Yay! Um, but yeah, tell a friend. <laughs> uh, tell a nerdy friend about it. And uh, thanks for following. And uh, we'll see you sometime next week. See everybody. Yeah. Bye.